think we're starting. Okay, cool. It's on. So, what's up, my ninjas? I am Strident, and I am here with my homeboy, Dar. Hey, guys. <laughs> and we are doing our first, hopefully this will be the first of many, uh, Joe Talk War Stories, where we talk about uh, just all things G.I. Joe, mostly, you know, from our perspective. We're not going to be doing a, a bunch of, like, you know, Hasbro ass kissing. We're just going to talk about, I guess, the positives of being a Joe collector, regular Joe collectors, because we're not all rich and stuff. I mean, I'm not rich. Are you rich? I'm not rich. <laughs> I go to college. Yeah, exactly. We've. I'm still paying for college, so um, <laughs> it's 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 like you know what what do what do regular collectors? How do we handle? you know, being a Joe collector, what's it like for us? Because you hear all those other podcasts and other videos where it seems like these cats have just huge disposable income. They can spend a thousand dollars or 800 bucks on a Brazilian reissued GI Joe figure on the wrong backing. I'm like, yeah, that's not, I'm not interested in that stuff. I just like the cool figures. I'm sure we just like the cool looking figures that kind of have a, uh, you know, some kind of significance to us. Um, I don't know. What do you, how do you, what do you feel about that? Feel about, <laughs> <laughs> about being, you know, just being a regular collector, like how you're, what perspective are you coming to it from? I don't know. I just collect what I, want, <laughs> what I like. Yeah. That makes sense. It's, yeah, it's common sense almost. It's not like I have to have everything, you know, it's just cherry picking is the best way to go. And Exactly. Just have fun. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, with that, um, I guess you guys all know Dar. If you don't, I'm going to have his, uh, you know, channel information in the uh, description. And uh, you guys are, you know me, you're on my channel. So, <laughs> but, um, so the first thing I want to talk about is there's uh, a bunch of, We've heard a bunch of perspectives based on what's coming out right now. You've seen reviews of the 50th anniversary stuff. But we want to talk about, or I propose we talk about, what made us collect G.I. Joes in the first place. And like the good, the good memories, because we've got so much bad with the way Hasbro's been handling stuff that it would make all the sense in the world for us to talk about the good you know what kept us there why we're still even in the middle of all this craziness we still managed to collect joes and enjoy uh collecting gi joe so um i don't know i'll let you go first unless you want me to go first so you can think of what you want to say <laughs> yeah i guess we'll go with that yeah you want me to go first yeah okay um so I like, uh, I don't know, I came through to G.I. Joe through the cartoon. Um, I had figures, like the 12-inch figures. Some people always gave them to me when I was a kid, but they weren't characters back then. They were just like generic soldiers in like World War II clothing, you know what I mean? Or World War, uh, uh, some of them, I think they were World War I uh, uh, designs as well. Like, you know, fatigues and stuff. And But um so I would make up my own characters with the 12-inch figures and then switch their clothes with, like, Star Wars, you know, 12-inch figures or freaking my sister's Ken dolls. Like, I would take, like, their regular clothes and then switch them and put them on, you know, my G.I. Joe to make them look like an um, undercover police officer or something like that because I grew up an action junkie. But um, it's when uh, the cartoon came out or when I, I got a hold of the cartoon – that it was like, wow, this is like a whole fully realized world. They're like superheroes, but military. And um, it just was fun. So I, when I was a kid, I only had a handful of Joes at a time because I'd play with them too damn hard and then they'd break. Um, and my dad would get pissed because he had to keep fixing them. So he's just like, you know, <laughs> screw this, play with something else. Um, but I had a friend whose dad was uh, in the military and this kid had everything. You know, when they talk about, when people talk about that one kid that had everything, like for whatever it was, every Transformer, every whatever, he had yeah. everything. <laughs> he, even had, <laughs> he even had the, uh, you know how when you get certain vehicles, they came with that checklist? Yeah. And then you could, you could decide which, you know, what collections you want to start or which parts you want to, you know, collect and you check off as you go. Well, he had yeah. a book 
Because I guess if you're part of like a collector's club, when you, you mail away stuff, they sent you these little booklets. It was like a, like a, almost like a comic book thickness. So it just had all this stuff from all the different offerings that Hasbro was doing, like the 12 inch stuff, the real American hero stuff and stuff that was on the way. And then of course the mail away stuff. I, I was like, <laughs> I didn't even know all this existed, you know? And then he had so much of it. I mean, he had the Terradrome. He had, I think the only thing he didn't have, and if he had it, I didn't see it. It must have been in a basement, was the flag. But he had everything else. Whenever I slept over at his house, um, that's all we would do. We just I'd bring my four or five Joes over and just interact with his universe of G.I. Joes. And I always wanted, in the back of my mind, even as I got older, I was like, I want to be able to do that someday. That'd be so dope to have like, you know, a shitload of Joes. So, um, yeah, I don't know from the, that's the, that's the inspiration, you know, then they started getting better because I saw some of the 20, 25th anniversary stuff. Cause my stepson, um, that's how him and I connected. And I, and I mentioned this in a lot of the older videos is that we would go on toy runs looking for GI Joes and stuff or be on Amazon, like picking through all the, um, the uh you know 25th anniversary stuff and uh you know we'd learned there were figures that were like matt tracker for a long time i had no idea they made a matt tracker figure from mask in gi joe because it's like what the hell does he have to do with gi joe you know but a lot of fans loved it and it was like this pretty cool looking figure you know um but i really started collecting i was buying them for him and i wasn't collecting myself and then when Rise of Cobra dropped, I saw the toys before I saw the movie. And I was like, yeah, I have to get these. And I also saw Resolute, I think. Resolute came out a, a little bit before the movie. And um, I didn't see those toys until I had already started collecting Rise of Cobra toys. And that's when I became a complete just, this is going to be a thing for me from now on. And those figures, the movie was like, eh. But the toys were fucking phenomenal. Like, no matter what anyone says, I mean, there were some crappy ones in there, but the good ones, when it was good, it was really, really good. I mean, like Agent Helix is an amazing figure. Most of the standard, uh, what are they called, City Strike figures, the ones in the, the reactive impact armor with the black, the black suits and all that stuff, they were amazing figures. I had no issues with them, except I don't like Channing Tatum as Duke. <laughs> I didn't either, but I kind of gained respect for him in retaliation. Yeah, he was better than that. Yeah, he felt more like Duke, but, but he still didn't look anything like Duke or yeah. anything like that. Well, I, I just yeah. I thought like he he Duke is supposed to be that guy. Like Duke and Flint are somewhat the same character, but different on different spectrums. Like both of them are the guy you want to take orders from. Like they, yeah. they look like guys that can command the team and the team won't be like, fuck that guy. I'm not going to do what he says. They'll be like, you know, that guy set the ex example, kind of like the way Captain America, Chris Evans is Captain America, the way he you want to listen to him. He doesn't seem like a jerk. He seems like if he's I mean, he still gets the same hatred that Superman gets just because he's the leader. Same thing with Cyclops. But like. He doesn't feel like a jerk. He feels like if he's making a decision and he's telling you to do something, it's probably the right thing to do, and that's why he's telling you to do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't feel like a, uh, like he's pompous in any kind of way. Um, and then like Duke felt like he will get the job done. He'll be kind of rough about it, but he'll get it done. Whereas like Flint seems like he's so smart that even if you're pissed because he's like he seems like a know it all. He still will get the job done, and you trust that he will. So you'll 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 follow his directions. You won't just be like, you know, I don't want I don't like screw that guy. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to him. And, and um, Channing Tatum doesn't feel like any of that. He just seems like some dude who was put in the position, this pretty boy that was put in the lead position. Yeah, physically he can do all the stuff that's necessary, but like when I hear him speak, and I just see how he you know, carries himself, he doesn't feel like that kind of guy. Like, he would have been better, he's better when it's a, um, a, uh, like, Olymp not Olympus has fallen, what was the other one called? White House Down or something like that? Yeah, White House Down. He felt like that's the role you pick for him, not Duke. Duke is a little bit 
more uh, strict and and straight arrow type, where like you know he does exactly. He's more of a Captain America type, you know what I mean? And that's that's what I always pictured for him. So I use the resolute Duke's head on the majority of my Duke figures. Um, it just matched better for me. It's what I picture Duke looking like to some degree. But uh, yeah, man, after Rise of Cobra and Resolute and then Pursuit of Cobra, it was a wrap. I didn't really, I didn't need anything else. I was like, yep, that's it for me. That's This is where I'm going to collect the majority of my stuff. And every now and then, like with the Dreadnoughts, I, knit, I uh, cherry pick from the 25th anniversary because there's not that many versions of those guys. Um, yeah. Vehicles. The vehicles are probably the best thing you can pick from all the different eras. The only problem is that sometimes the pegs don't work. You can't use the old school vintage pegs with the new figures. It just won't. It won't work. Um, which was an issue I had with the 50th anniversary stuff because some of those vehicles, like the uh, the Wolf, I think it's called, the one, the two pack that has uh, snake eyes and an Arctic ghost hawk, and then uh, it's got a. Uh, some kind of snow serpent looking dude with the polar wolf. I think the cobra wolf is what it's called. Um, the pegs on it are vintage pegs because all they did was repackage and re repour the freaking vintage wolf and uh, sell it under the 50th anniversary uh, banner, which, you know, I'm going to stay away from how I feel about all that stuff because we're talking about the yeah. good stuff. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's 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 hard to 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 use those kind of things from the vintage line with the new stuff. But as far as actually putting your guys in a vehicle or something like that, it's real simple and real easy, and it's it's pretty much the way to go because we don't really have that many new vehicles. You know what I mean? Like Rise of Cobra had a shitload of vehicles, but besides that, there really weren't that many other ones. I mean, even in pursuit of cobra we got vehicles but there weren't that many vehicles not compared to what you could get if you cherry pick but anyway i'm talking too much um <laughs> that that stuff was what made me you know get into gi joe and now i just i have ideas for different teams and you know both good guys and bad guys you know cobra and gi joe and uh, i just collect according to that like which guys make sense for this team you know, so I get those guys, which vehicles make sense for this team, you know, or whatever team. And I collect that way. And I always have to keep in mind space because you can go crazy. Like I got the Defiant last year and I had to put the thing in a closet because if I put it out on the floor in my man cave, it's taking up a shitload of space. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love that thing. And I, I would like to look at it all the time, but it's like, it's so it's huge it's it's one of the biggest vehicles i've ever seen like you know like i've ever had in my own possession so yeah it's weird you, you always got to keep space in mind but yeah yeah that's imagine imagine finding the uss flag on craigslist for a really damn good price oh my god I mean. oh my god <laughs> it's funny though because we at one point my wife found one for a decent price it was way under like 600 bucks, way under 500 bucks. I think it was like maybe the dude was selling. It didn't have all the parts, but it had the majority. He didn't have the um, the bottom part, like the, the, the armature that's holding it up. He had built a different armature out of wood. So he was selling it with that wooden armature and he had taken off all the bottom parts because the bottom of the, of the flag is made out of kind of brittle plastic. And a lot of times it bends under the weight of the deck. So um, this dude pretty much just made a, a boat-shaped lower half and was going to sell that. But when I learned how little of a play set the, the, the flag actually is, you know, because I've seen it maybe once at a, a toy show here in Columbus. Um, but uh, I saw it one time, and I was like, I always imagined that there were all these rooms and stuff it's only like a couple of rooms. It's not really that interactive. You know what I'm saying? Like you could put, I guess if you have those smaller planes like the fire bats or the sky sweepers or uh, those, uh, the core, those planes that I showed you guys, the, um, the flash hawks, I think is what they're called. 
Um, you could fit a bunch of those on the deck and it would look like a real aircraft carrier, but I don't think you could fit very many um, Sky Strikers on there because the Sky Strikers are huge and they take up way more space than those smaller planes. But uh, yeah. But when I saw that, I was like, I don't know if I want it. So I passed on it just because, I mean, also, it was still a lot of money. I think it was like 250 or something like that, 250 <laughs> And I was still yeah. like, I'm not paying 250 for this. I mean, like, for the, the Defiant paying, I paid 100 bucks for it and uh, something like that. It was like 100, 120 or something like that. And, I mean, it's the gantry, the booster, and the ship. And he, it had just about all the parts. So I'm like, if and this dude said he had four of them, and that's why he was trying to get rid of that one. I'm like, shit, I will take that off your hands. I have no problem doing this. None whatsoever. <laughs> so, you know, it just was one of those things where it just it, it, it worked out. But, yeah, space is a big deal when you collect Joes, especially vehicles. A lot of people don't really get into the vehicles, but I, I like all of the stuff working together. And, yeah. Space for vehicles is, is a pain in the behind, man. Such a pain. <laughs> Big pain. Um, but what about you? What 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 keeps you going? What keeps me going? Well, I started, you know, getting into G.I. Joe. Well, the franchise itself uh-huh. through the cartoon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As five years old, you know, when it shows late at night on Cartoon Network on Toonami and oh, all yeah. that stuff. Those are the days, just, man. What? I said those were the days. Yeah. Those were the days. And um, you know when the Spy Troops movie came out and Baylor vs. Venom? Yeah. Remember? The, yeah, those CGI movies? Yeah, I got into those. I've never gotten to the action figure line until uh-huh. Rise of Cobra came out. <laughs> so, But at least a year later because I started collecting in 2010. Uh-huh. But 2009 was when Rise of Cobra came out because... I, I was I got into those figures because my friend had them because yeah. he was to, um, buying toys and he was like getting stuff whatever's trendy right right now you know like I remember when the first Transformers movie came out he got um, the movie figures like almost everyone who was in the movie <laughs> and then when Revenge of the Fallen came out he got like most of everyone who was in the movie Jeez. and by the time Rise of Cobra came out he got like a handful of Rise of Cobra stuff. He got what was it? The Rhino, the yeah, yeah, the Sigma Six vehicle, right? Yeah, they, uh, it was inspired. Yeah, they, Six, yeah, they, they upsized it. Yep. Yeah, he got um, the Night Raven as well, but yeah. and he had the um, Delta Six Ripcord, but he couldn't fit in the Night Raven. <laughs> Did you need reactive impact armor for that? Yeah, but. But yeah, and he had Duke, he had Cobra Commander. Um, my brother had a 12-inch Snake Eyes figure, those talking ones. Oh yeah, I got the talking Duke. I still have them. <laughs> yeah, and we were playing with those like in the backyard, upstairs, downstairs, even in the streets, man. And we're not supposed <laughs> to play in the streets because it was dangerous. <laughs> I mean, we played everywhere. It's like front yard, backyard, and you know, at the park sometimes. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like that, man. <laughs> it's just, that's how it gets. You get so happy and you just forget. You forget where you are and you just, you know, you just, you just get lost in the moment. I think that's stuff like that is what made it stick. You know what I mean? Like, that's why for so long we've been, at least I know for me, this is why I've been playing with them for so long and collecting them. Even when I show my kids and they see it and they're like, you can do that, or you could put this guy here. You can open this place up, and there's missiles there, and they just get geeked. That they geek out with me about that stuff, and it's just like, man, no other toy line seems to be able to, or was able to do that as long as the Joes were. But anyway, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've done some missions. You know, like we have a friend who has a backyard that has like a hill or whatever, and we get to use that area as like. A desert area, and then front yards are like the jungle area, <laughs> and you know we use sidewalks and streets as our you know city strikes um, area. But we don't because we live in California, so there's really not any snow here, so yeah. we don't even play with any of the Arctic stuff. Yeah, 
unless we use like you know white blankets pillows and all that stuff yeah that is, that's the way to do it. I was teaching my son that years ago. <laughs> when he turned about six, he got the um, Rise of Cobra. I think it's the Ice Dagger. And um, he never really played with it. And I'm like, why don't you play with this thing, man? Like, you, you wanted it. You bugged and bugged and bugged and we got it. So, so what's up with this? And he's like, uh, there's just no, there's not a lot of snow and I don't want to take it outside because I'll lose the parts. I was like, okay, let's play inside. He's like, how are you going to play inside with it? You can't bring snow in the house. And I'm like, you don't have to bring snow in the house. That doesn't make any sense, dude. Just let's use white sheets. You pile up some pillows or some other sheets. Put the white sheets over them and blankets over them. And you make your little mountains in your, you know, of snow and whatnot. And you pretend everything is covered in snow. But you just use a white sheet and you're good. Blew, it blew his freaking mind. Like, <laughs> it's just weird because it's such a small thing, you know. But blew his mind i think he was like yeah he's about to be six when that happened five or six no he's about to be six but anyway yeah <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much yeah we've been playing and then i guess that year in 2009 i had to move to a different city and all that yeah and then i lived near nobody i guess we live in a boring neighborhood where they're just purely adults and they do have kids but they're toddlers oh, so yeah sucks. and by the time 2010 came, I'm like, you know what, I think, because back in 2009, 2008, I've been watching, you know, G.I. Joe reviews from, ranging from 25th anniversary to Rise of Cobra stuff, and I'm like, that's awesome, and I didn't know adults actually collect toys, you know, yeah. like, I thought that was, and I'm not saying it because I got into it just because I can fit in, no, like no. most people do these days, I don't know, no. I, I did it because I wanted to do it, but I just thought, we were supposed to grow up, you know, yeah. being taught to grow out of toy collecting. You know what I mean? Exactly. But I feel like that's like my life right here. Exactly. <laughs> something. Like, yeah. I was mad this. Exactly, because it never... It's one of those things where the, the urge... And it's weird. I'm glad that you point that out, too, because, like, you don't know how many times in a review or something in the, in the comments, there's people saying, I used to have G.I. Joes or I used to collect figures, but... I got married and I sold them all or my wife made me sell them all or, you know, like I still want to collect that stuff, but I feel weird because I'm an adult. Um, I did a video for yeah. one guy who that was exactly the case. And it's like, dude, you play video games. You you play with your car like people buy cars strictly to play with, like if they can afford it. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's an expensive ass hobby. I mean, collecting can get expensive, too, if you don't collect responsibly. But like. You're playing with something. Women play with shoes and purses and, you know what I mean? Like, makeup and all that shit. Like, why can you not, as a dude, be an adult and play with toys? Like, shit, it's just another thing. And especially, like, when it's you spending time doing something that does not hurt anyone else. You're not hurting yourself. Especially if you take care of all your, you know, grown-up responsibilities before you sit down and play. If you're one of those people who, like, everything you do revolves around collecting then you got a problem. But, like, if you, you know, you take care of what you need to take care of, and then this is how you relax, why the fuck not? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why is that a problem? It should never be a problem. I I, I just never understood that. I, I had a brief period of time where I kind of felt like that, and it was when I moved here from uh, New Jersey, and I uh, while I was in college, I had I didn't bring my figures from my mom's house back to, or here with me, so um, while I was here, I just had a handful of figures. I think I had mostly like X-Men figures and some Metal Gear Solid McFarlane figures. And uh, I just kept them for some of them were boxed up and like one or two of them were on my desk near my computer. And that was it. And then I realized how much I missed all that other shit because he would talk about this stuff all the time. Like old figures that you used to have, like the old Dark Knight collection by Kenner. Um I had so much of that stuff. And I was like, man, I need to bring that shit up here. And I finally did. And it improved my, like, I don't know, my mood when I'm working on my artwork and I'm surrounded by all this stuff. It just kept me happier, you know what I mean, while I'm doing what I'm doing. Because this is this is part of your life, you know what I mean? It, 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 yeah. You can't really just separate yourself from it. But anyway, let me let you finish. I'm sorry. I keep jumping in. <laughs> yeah, and regarding the Rise of Cobra movie, when I watched it, I thought it was okay. It was just whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know. But 
I will say I watch that movie more times than I do with Retaliation. Yeah, me too. But, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, by the time in 2010, when I started collecting, I started off collecting some of the Soda Street Fighter figures. Awesome line. Just because, yeah, just because I was in that Street Fighter phase at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I started getting G.I. Joe stuff. I, um, I did get the Rise of Cobra pack. It was like Attack on the G.I. Joe Pit, which came with like a pit trooper, a green pit trooper. And it comes with um, a Duke in his green and brown camel gear or whatever. And it comes with Ripcord in his pit gear. And it came with two Neo Vipers, I think. And it came with a mole pod. Oh, I remember and that. Pretty, yeah. And it came with that. And I and I guess it was the time before Pursuit of Cobra actually came out, so Yeah. That yeah, was, um wasn't I, that one I went I remember going to Ross getting that steel crusher for um ten bucks at Ross. <laughs> you know, the, that, color that they use in Rise of Cobra. Yeah. Yeah. I remember getting that and then I remember getting um the Resolute Duke from the twenty fifth anniversary line. Yep. Yeah. Twenty fifth Scarlet and all that stuff, you know. Yep. And then when Pursuit of Cobra came out, like I remember Pursuit of Cobra, like I guess it was the time it came out, or at during the same time. I remember you can already see some stuff at Ross. I think. Yeah, yeah. Ross was a good yeah, place. Like, um. TJ Maxx was a good place. Uh, Marshalls, like those stores. Ross is, I think, in that family. Hastings was another one. Um, yeah, they were they were all yeah. big places to find them. Because I think when Pursuit of Cobra came out, then all the Rise of Cobra stuff was like super discounted because it had already been in stores for what two years or a year and a half, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it was with me. I got my the the Rhino we got for ten bucks at target um then uh the um night raven my stepson got that for about 10 bucks something like that um at uh target um trying to think of other vehicles i think ev just about everything vehicle wise we got it on sale in some kind of way but i paid full price for the uh figures at walmart and they were all like seven eight bucks you know what i mean like Oh man, good time. Man, like I it, even when I think back to buying Pursuit of Cobra figures, man. I remember we were going to uh a vac we went on vacation. It's the one vacation I've ever been on <laughs> in my adult life. It's the one vacation we ever went on. Um we went to uh Michigan. We went to this uh there's like a series of of uh, it's just, it's Beaver Island. It's off the coast of Michigan. It's really cool, really, you know, pretty far out there so you don't really have signal and uh it's where i took the pictures of shadow tracker you remember because uh, i got him while we were on that trip we got shadow tracker and skydive at a walmart somewhere between columbus ohio and uh you know beaver island michigan and uh i think i paid seven bucks for each <laughs> And nowadays, if you try to look for those same figures on eBay, they're going to go for at least $20 or more at, you know, like on the least, on, on the small end, you know, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. And, um, pretty much, yeah, from Ross, I got, um, uh, Pursuit of Cobra, or not Pursuit of Cobra, Paris Pursuit Baroness for, um, five bucks, I think, and along with... Desert Ambush Dukes and all that. Yeah. Pursuit Snake Eyes. Yeah, man, like, Rise of Cobra costing seven bucks. I remember Toys R Us had a sale or a deal, you know, buy one, get one half off, you know? <laughs> but now Toys R Us these days just brings the price down. They don't really do anything. Well, they do it on some of their other stuff, but yep. not really on the actual figure yep. thing, but... Um, pretty much, yeah. And Pursuit of Cobra was, like, going in the store. Like, that's when hunting was, like, at its peak. Toy hunting yep. was, like, super fun. It's, like, going to stores, and then when you find at least one Pursuit of Cobra, you get all excited, you know what I mean? It's, like, <laughs> it's like yeah. I remember finding the whole first wave, but I just end up 
picking some of the ones I liked. Like the Jungle Duke was like my favorite Duke. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, and Desert Snake Eyes and all that stuff. I still didn't, I still don't have Beachhead for some reason. Super <laughs> Cobra Beachhead. Wow, you slept on that one, man. Yeah, like a lot of them, and some of the Toys R Us exclusives I've never found. You know, like the the Billy um spirit. You know. Yeah. I was just talking about that with Kyle earlier today on um, on YouTube. Uh, we were talking about because you know I did the review of the two packs, and so my mother in law got me got me the one with uh, Spirit and Storm it's Shadow. Tough. And uh, there's things I like about it, but I I hate his weapons. I'm like seriously, you're still. How did you give him updated weapons for Pursuit of Cobra, and then only a couple years later you give him back the weapons from the 25th anniversary? Like that doesn't make sense. You should be moving <laughs> further forward. You can't keep drop jumping backwards. You know what I mean? That's what messes things up. But, uh, yeah, I did enjoy that. The only reason why I didn't pick him up is because I didn't pick up the Pursuit of Cobra Spirit because he was pretty much just reused parts from Shadow Tracker. And, uh, I mean, different head, but I think the body, everything else, even some of his weapons, it was all Shadow Tracker. And I didn't want to have... Yeah. I don't. I hate having figures that are blatantly like a reuse of another character. I mean, if it works, it works. And I guess for him, it kind of works. But still, like if the two were ever side by side, you'd just be like, shit, I just bought the same figure with a different <laughs> head. You know what I mean? I, that's one of my pet peeves. I mean, I know collectors can be uh, OCD and stuff, and we, we nitpick little things, but that was one of the things that always bothered me about collecting Joes is the, the reuse of parts. I hate buying the same figure over and over and over. I hate it. Yeah. Unless it's an army builder. Then I'm cool. I'm cool with it. <laughs> yeah. Most of, the, most of the vehicles I've got from Pursuit of Cobra were from Ross, you know? Like yeah. twelve ninety nine, I think. Yeah. Because I refuse to pay full price for a vehicle. That's yeah. just me. You shouldn't have to. Yeah. Most Except the off striker from Pursuit of Cobra, because I think I paid full price for that. Yeah, but that was like a twenty dollar figure, a twenty dollar, twenty four dollar. I think it was less than that, right? Because it was a Bravo. Yeah, it was like fifteen, I think. Yeah. I remember paying fifteen for the rest. Yeah, because it was a smaller. It was one of I can't remember what were they Alpha, Bravo, and then Deluxe or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, at Ross, I got the Cobra Fury. You know, the tank in. God, I missed out on that one. I'm still trying to get one for a good price. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty cool vehicle. It's it not is. bad. It is. It's awesome. I just, God, I hate that I didn't get it. I had an opportunity to get it, and I just slow rolled, and then I missed out. I was like, damn it. I hate when that happens. Yeah, and I got the Pursuit of Cobra his tank, and I geeked out even more because it was a black one because I hated the olive color one. Yeah, I have red ones. Um. Yeah, I never saw the black or the olive cover colored ones in the store. I always saw the red ones. I have the red ones from Pursuit of Cobra and the blue ones from Retaliation because they were on clearance for like <laughs> <laughs> they were like eight bucks or something. So I bought like two of them. I was like, "Yep," because I for me, if I'm gonna army build anything, four is the the minimum and six would be the max. So I have four, maybe six his tanks. I can't remember. I think I have six. Um, yeah, I only, I only have the one hit Cobra because I do the real working treads and all that and the battle mode or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like when Retaliation came out, they had wheels instead of working treads. It's a cool design, but it's just the no working treads. Yeah, you can count me out. That's a deal breaker <laughs> for me. Really? <laughs> I liked it because when you play with um, – have you ever played with the classic Cobra Hiss? No, I haven't. So, like, the classic one... Did. The classic one is exactly like the uh, Retaliation one, where the, the the treads are sculpted, but there's wheels in the treads on the bottom half, so it can roll really fast. Because um, they're supposed to be really fast. If you, yeah. If you try to... <laughs> if you try to roll a, a, um, <laughs> a Pursuit of Cobra Hiss with those treads... It's just not going to do anything unless it's unless you put oil oh, on, yeah, on the tread. Right. It's just going to sit there. Yeah, that's right. I remember one of the one of the tread pieces like snapped off or it pegged off and I have to peg it back in. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean. 
Yeah, so I, I always, I was always like, it has to be, um, I prefer the plastic. I even ended up taking off the treads to make it more uh, cohesive with the other, um, you know, the other, uh, you know, hisses that I have. Because um, I just, I don't know, for me, playing with my son, like, we, we actually will make them do stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know you did too, because you were talking about playing in the street and everything like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like we would make them do stuff, and I hated like explaining like why it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. So for the sake of less explanation, I just took the treads off because he was complaining. He'd be trying to push it, and it just wouldn't go anywhere. And you know, I was just like, "Nah, we got to simplify." But like when I'm taking pictures and stuff, yeah, the treads are staying on, unless I'm just being lazy, <laughs> and, and I'm like, "This is." This is a new, faster version of the Cobra Hiss. Then, <laughs> you know, the dreads come off. But yeah, yeah, those, man. It, it, I, I wonder if we're ever going to run into a time like that ever again when it comes to, <laughs> to G.I. Joe, you know? Yeah. Because most of my friends already grew out of... <laughs> of collecting, yeah. Playing with toys. It's so weird. So, yeah. I, it's so weird. So many people... Yeah. Like, right now, it seems like being a geek and being, you know, into comics and toys and comic book-related movies and stuff, it's the fad. Even though some of us, this is just what we always did. Yeah. And you would think, though, with that, I mean, when you go to the store and you look for any toy, any popular character, there's, like, next to nothing. So you would think not that many people um, are afraid to just collect figures and stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's accepted now. But then you still have those, a lot of spaces. I can't say you have the spaces, but it's a lot of spaces where we're still the minority, even though, you know, right now it's accepted. We're still the, the minority in these circles when it comes to, like, collecting action figures and enjoying comics and stuff. You know, the stuff that was considered kid stuff. It's it's so weird. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was around the end of Pursuit Pursuit of Cobra when everything was so hard to find now. Like, yep. I got so lucky that I found the Cobra Shock Trooper. I remember the perfect, the so-called quote-unquote perfect snake guys was, like, hard to find, too. And then yeah. Bunny Bags Destro, Low Light, never found them. Shadow Tracker, never found them either. <laughs> Man, I got really lucky with Money Bags Destro. I don't even know how that happened. I was just, I was looking for medicine. <laughs> I was at Walgreens <laughs> looking for medicine, and I saw this, the red and the gray on the suit. I'm like, is this Moneybags Destro just sitting here? Yoink. Like, that shit was mine. I'm like, yep. <laughs> I think I paid, I might have paid eight or nine bucks for him. That's insane. If you look him up, he's always expensive. Yeah. And I, I was hoping the 50th anniversary. Like, I'm not against re-releasing stuff, but at least re-release the good shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, Low Light, I was so grateful for that. Yeah. That makes sense. That's that's your your the company listening to the fans, you know? Because they know some stuff. Distribution was very weird with Pursuit of Cobra and the 30th anniversary. Like, I remember <laughs> when... Um, that's why you guys got that review from me, that super review where I reviewed, like, the entire wave of 30th anniversary figures went with uh, sci-fi and um and the toxic what are they called the hazard viper and the zombie viper and all that stuff because the my techno wife, viper uh-huh my wife and i saw them we're like holy shit is this everybody we just pushed it all into the cart <laughs> <And> <laughs> we're like you know she, she called me because i was looking for something else we were shopping for one of my uh stepson's friends uh he, he, had, he was having a birthday party so you're pretty much going there to get stuff for him. So I thought we were done. And then she calls me. She's like, do you have these guys yet? I'm like, who? She's like, there's a green and yellow guy. I'm like, no. All I have is, uh, what you call it? Uh, I think at the time, the only person I had was uh, Ripcord, maybe. Or maybe it was uh, Storm Shadow. No, he was the last one of the group I got. So yeah, it was Ripcord. I was like, no, nah, I only have Ripcord. The one that she told me looked like me. So she was like, well, do you, do you have the red and white guy? I'm like, Lifeline? She's like, yep. I'm like, nope. Put him in the cart. 
I ran over to the <laughs> aisle. I was so excited. It was ridiculous. Like, that doesn't happen anymore because there's, like, I'm not really looking for any of this stuff because I'm, I don't expect it anymore. You know what I mean? Like, that's part yeah. of the reason why I was like, let's talk about this stuff because when you think back to how much fun it was to actually go on a toy run and go find stuff. Like, I remember when... I would be excited for you guys on the community when you guys found shit. Like, <laughs> I would see you guys post a picture, and I'd be like, oh, my God, they found it, finally, you know, as if it was me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd be so jelly, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, sometimes I'd be jealous because there, was, there wasn't anything around my way. I'd have to wait a while. But, like, it was just the whole thing of, you know, going out, looking for something, and then finding it. It was fun. Now it's like I spend most of my time. Like I just got two steel crushers for about 15 bucks on eBay. Um, and I had to hunt and hunt and hunt. And then I came across that. And I'm like, he's only asking for, f I think you, at the time, the first bid was like 12. I was like, are you kidding me? For two steel crushers? I think one was missing maybe the the big chunky piece on the top. But I was like, I don't care. Like as one of them has everything. So I really don't care. The other one can just be a like just a truck an armored truck for cobra i don't really care if it's missing anything and uh i was so excited about that but i don't even have the thing in hand you know and it's all dusty and whatnot from the pictures it's not even a brand new something but that's where i was finding my excitement whereas like before it would be actually going out hunting it down yourself sometimes even opening or peeking at it in the car on the way home <laughs> like i don't know how many times i'd stop in the uh, parking lot or I'd, I'd get to the parking lot and then like my son's like so so let's let's open it and i'm like nah we gotta wait till we get home and then i sit down in the car and i'm like all right screw it let's open it and we open up the toy and we're looking at all the cool stuff because it was just fun you know it was like this is why it's part of why we do what we do you know yeah and when it came to the 30th anniversary line i remember I think that was the first time I came across your channel, and it was the Stalker review. Oh, yeah. Because my birthday was coming up, and I was, like, watching a bunch of reviews. I'm like, none of these reviews, like, got me sold onto getting this figure, but your review, on the other hand, got me sold. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going to the comic book store, because you can never find the, at least the first wave of 30th anniversary, because you got, like, Steel Brigade, Cobra Troopers, yeah. the Cobra Viper, the Hazard Viper, and Iron Grenadier. Yeah. Never found those guys. Really? But Stalker, I found him in a comic book store for, like, 10 bucks. And That's awesome. back then, it, it wasn't too bad paying 10 bucks, but nowadays, it's like paying a, a retail 10 bucks for an average sloppy-looking Joe. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, Wave 2 with Duke, Snake Eyes, Cobra Commander, and Firefly from Renegades. Got those guys. Yep. Same thing with Rip Ripcord, Scarlet, Tunnel Rat, and the Cobra Trooper. I dig the Cobra Trooper from yeah. the Renegade. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Found Storm Shadow, the ultimate Storm Shadow or whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's my it, favorite it, like, one of the Storm Shadows that they released. I know they did another one in Retaliation, but... By that point, I was already like, I, I'm like, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> like, because they, it, yeah, they and people like, like are, are putting him online as rare, quote unquote rare. Yeah, come on, man. He was at five below. There were like 50 of them back in, and that was. Yeah. Do you remember? The, do you guys have five belows over in your in your area? Nope. I, I, at least I don't think so. Maybe I haven't been to my area or yeah. like everywhere in California. So we, yeah, yeah. we possibly could have one, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about five below until somebody posted that on the Joe community. And then I, I went to our mall and a, a new one had just popped up. Like it had just popped up. It, it had the grand opening stuff still on it. So we went in there and it was like, all the figures that I, I thought were cool from Retaliation, all of them were there. They had um, the uh, Crimson Guards, Flint, Ultimate Duke, which I regretted once I opened the package and messed around with him. Um, I never got, I never got an Ultimate Duke. I really wanted him. Yeah. But 
after after hearing that he can't hold two guns, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, like he can't two hand his weapons properly. Um, yeah, two hand his weapons. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, just it just that part was just like disappointing because I'm like, you say ultimate, it should be able to do all this stuff. Um, who else did they have up there? Oh, the um. The Cobra Special Forces, they had those guys, which I had never seen anywhere else. So I think I have three of them, because that was all there there were there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. But they were all five bucks. So I didn't even, I didn't even get close to breaking the bank. <laughs> I was like, because you know, sometimes you're like, I'm going to go get this thing that costs this amount of money. But then you see a bunch of other stuff, and then you're like... I don't want to spend over this amount. And then you pick it all up, hoping or adding up in your head that you're still under budget, and then you might go a little bit over. This time with them, I had like eight figures in my cart, and uh, I get up to the register, and I already knew. I was like, yeah, I'm nowhere near, you know, breaking the bank, you know, 25 bucks for five of them, like, and I have eight figures. I'm like, this is awesome, because how often do you get to come home with, like, a wave worth of figures and you didn't even spend 40 bucks you didn't even spend 100 bucks you know what i mean like usually if you if you buy a wave of figures in these in this day and age you're going to drop 120 dollars or something or 100 and you know something dollars because everything is 20 bucks everything is 17.99 you know what i mean or 18.99 you know so it's so crazy that that was something that could have happened that that happened you know yeah <laughs> like uh <laughs> but yeah like after the 30th anniversary everything went downhill with retaliation but we all know knew, we've all been stressing stressing about that already so yeah what yeah. um is there anything like when you're collecting now is there anything, what is it that keeps you collecting now? Like, what is it that, like, are you working towards something, like, with your collection? Or do you just collect? Because, like, a lot of people I see collect so they can say they have the figure. They don't really play with them. Once it goes on the shelf, it just stays on the shelf, and it, it doesn't get interacted with again. But, like, I know some people who actively, like, they take a lot of pictures. I know you take pictures. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they interact with their figures a little bit more than that. You see them switching up things, trying to fix issues that the figure may have had. Um, you see them getting weapons from Marauders or from another Joe set that they um, kind of give to their, uh, you know, to whatever Joe it is. I mean, what do you do? What is? Do you have a goal with the way you collect? Not really. <laughs> 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 I just get what I want, I guess. And, um, on eBay, I have saved searches, and I like you said, like you said, you had a list, right? I do have a list too. All yeah. the past stuff, I I really wanted so bad, like um, Lifeline, Sci-Fi, Airtight. Never found them in the store, and online, twenty dollars and up. I, and yeah. I made this rule that I'm, I'm never gonna pay twenty dollars for one Joe. Damn. Never, absolutely not. Really, I had to pay twenty for my um, Pit Vipers. Um, I mean, my Pit. Uh, troopers, the Joe Pitt Troopers, oh, okay. because I could never find them for under twenty five bucks. So I got like a lot. It was two of them, and the lot was like thirty something when you include shipping. So pretty much, you know, they were fifteen a piece, you know, or you know something like that. But uh, yeah, it was more than what I wanted to pay. But I was like, you know what? At this in this situation, I'm just gonna take advantage of it. But um, yeah. Sometimes things happen like that. Like, yeah. But when you look back, it's like sometimes you you better not make that mistake again. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. It's like exactly. Yeah. Are there so if you came across um, any of those figures now and they were like fifteen, you know, close to twenty bucks, would you buy them? If they're new in box, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've noticed too a lot of, especially with like Resolute, a lot of my Resolute figures I bought loose, but the yeah. person, the person had them bagged up and stuff, so they were in good condition. Because honestly, if you're gonna keep them in the box, then it's it's worth it to buy them new in the box. But if you're gonna actually play with them and pose them and do stuff, it it makes no sense, especially with rare figures. It's like just get them how you can get them. 
Um, I know some people want them so they can grade them and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the corners on the, the card are all awesome and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's one of those situations where it's like, I want to, how badly do I want the figure? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if I really want the figure, then I guess I'm just going to have to bite the bullet, pay the price for, for however the figure's offered. Um, I did get lucky, though, like with a lot of Pursuit of Cobra uh, Vipers that I have. Most of them were mint on card, and uh, some of them, like the, the regular Neo Vipers, I have like six or seven of them. I got them for a penny a piece. No, was it a penny? It was, some, it was something like that. It was either a penny or 99 cents a piece, a dollar or a penny. I can't remember. It was something ludicrously cheap, and they didn't have more than the amount that I have right now. So I just, I think it was a penny a piece. No, it was a dollar a piece. It, there's no way it was a penny a piece. It was a dollar a piece. And somebody, and it was actually a U.S. seller. And I was like, is this a joke? I messaged the guy. I'm like, are you playing with me? Like, because that was the buy now price. One or 99 cents, something like that. I'm like, stop playing. And he's like, no, this is the real price. We came into a whole bunch of them. I'm like, shit, well, then I want a whole bunch of them. Because <laughs> a dollar a piece? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, that's... To me, troops should always be much cheaper than the main face characters because it doesn't make sense that you pay the same amount for a, a faceless Cobra Trooper that you pay for, you know, Cobra Commander. Who's more important, the Cobra Commander or the fucking Trooper? Like, if you're going to, if, if the company wants to be cheap, be cheap with the fucking Troopers and put all your money and your, your, your resources into your face characters that's the only thing i can give them props for in retaliations line was that like for the cobra troopers they went the cheap route and for the basic joe troopers not the cool joe troopers that i use for my team but like the ones that came in the first wave you know what i'm talking about the duke that had the weird silver armor on his chest and the i like that thing <laughs> i like it too it just it, it wasn't what we saw in the film so yeah I was like, it was I was like, okay, and then I think on that those figures, the Cobra Troopers and those original uh, Duke figures, you couldn't, their feet, I think, weren't articulated. I know the Cobra Troopers weren't articulated. I can't remember if the Joe ones were or not, but uh, they cut the articulation. I remember that was some a big point of contention for a lot of people, that the they were cutting out certain pieces of articulation. I think there was a... Um, there was a roadblock that was like that also. Remember the uh, the very first roadblock that came out with the the gun piece yeah, stuck to his hand? hand? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> that guy, yeah. It, it made no sense. It's like, what were you guys thinking? Yeah, the Joe the Joe Trooper. You couldn't move his feet. The original one, because um, I made them the support staff for my team. So I I feel like. That's awesome when it comes to army building because your army builder just needs to hold his gun and be able to stand up. You don't really need to do that much with him. You know, you need to be able to make him look like he's hurt when he falls down because he's going to get shot because there's support. Um, and they need to be able to, you know, hold their gun at least moderately well. And it's weird because those figures could hold their guns with two hands perfectly. There were no issues with them. Um, so, yeah, having them as support staff is pretty cool. It's just weird that, you know, more of the figures don't have that ability. Um, and they don't think like that when it comes to troopers, you know. Instead of trying to get all the money from from everybody for every figure, you know. It, uh, it's just strange. But uh, anyway, continue, continue. I'm sorry. I keep on doing that. My bad. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. And I don't even know what topic we're on. I totally <laughs> forgot. We were talking about... <laughs> I was asking you, like, if you collect with, a with like, a goal in mind or, you know, like... Oh, okay. Well, I really want to expand on my... Or I'm still working on my Joeverse, but it's just... I want... Because I love building my Joeverse when there's always, like, new Joes coming out, you know? Like, a new wave coming out. Yeah. And now it's like, you gotta wait. Like, with the 50th anniversary line, like, if you want a new wave, you have to wait a year later. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> 2014 and then 2015, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. And then 2016, we're getting nothing. 
And when you think about it, 2017 will be the 35th of Real American Hero, exactly. 35th anniversary. Exactly. Because back in 2007, it was the 25th anniversary. Yep. So, yep. so I don't even know what they're going to do. And because they are basically saying when the movie comes out, we're getting new figures, which is kind of stupid. Well, we, like, may, we may get new figures. They were saying... May get new figures. Yeah, if the, if the movies do well... Then they'll decide if that they should put money into the figures. I'm like, what? Like that doesn't even make sense. GI Joe was independent of movies and everything else. The movies were just a complement to the toy line, and they they served as like a further um, advertisement for the figures and stuff. So, yeah, I don't I don't know that. Like I said, that's that's why I stick with the the old stuff, um, the older stuff, because it's just more fun to. Instead of waiting for them to get their shit straight, it's more fun to just go out, you know, get on your computer or whatever and look at what you might be able to pick up, you know, because sometimes you get lucky and you could get a lot for, yeah. you know, a decent amount for like, you know, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, you get like, you know, 14, 15 figures or something. And it might be a couple that you have, but there might be a gang of figures you don't have. Um, it, it just depends. Um uh, but the hunt, the hunt is is the part that like it bothers me now because there's a lot of collectors that don't have to hunt down figures anymore. There's no such thing. It's like the whole hunting down your figures in retail, it's a thing of the past because most of the lines, like even legends, like people that collect Marvel Legends, how often do you really find all the legends? I mean, there's some people who I see consistently their Toys R Us has everything. But a lot of people they all say the same shit that I say. Like our stores don't have anything, you know. Um, I've been deal. I've been buying a lot of NECA stuff and looking for that stuff in the, um, you know, in the store. I've been lucky, but almost as soon as I figure out that it's there, right after I get mine, they're gone. All of them are gone, and and I just buy one. Sometimes I've I've tried to buy two for uh, like one for me and one for like ODC. That's me or someone else that mention that they wanted something but typically yeah. typically you see one or two and then it's done um so yeah it just feels like it's not going to be a thing much longer and you're going to have to really go hunt down your toys elsewhere and that's kind of sad i don't want to i don't like not being able to go to the toy store to go buy toys like <laughs> it just doesn't seem right you know yeah and the thing and another thing i want to add about uh, why G.I. Joe or collecting is so fun as well is because you can buy a multiple character like twice, even if it's like the same character, but you can kit bash and have fun with it exactly. compared to like, um, like let's say NECA, the new Kratos figure. What the fuck are you going to do with four? <laughs> because I've seen, I've seen people, um, they just buy four just because to have. And I'm like, yeah. why do you need four? <laughs> like. <laughs> To make us feel jealous. Like, unless you're going to give it to someone else, then okay, cool. You know, you're going to help someone else. That's awesome. But four for yourself, that, why? <laughs> yeah, that's just greed. It's just pure greed. Yeah, we see it on, on Facebook all the time. That's kind of why I got out of all the groups and stuff is because it's just a lot of showing off and a lot of greed and a lot of, like, selfishness. And I'm like, what happened, yeah. what happened to trying to, like, keep the community thing going, you know? And there was also... I guess this could be a good thing to talk about. Since both of us used to be really hardcore on the Joe community, um, what made you slow down on the Joe community? I mean, I know you're in school, so like you have your school stuff to pay attention to, but even before that, what made you, before you went to college? Because you were, like I think, our youngest member. Yeah. And what, what made you kind of slow down? Because I know around the time I slowed down, Arnold slowed down, um, a couple of us slowed down. Uh, Matthew slowed down like you did too what was your reasoning my reason was there's no new Joes coming out <laughs> like the reason why because when every time somebody posts new Joe stuff it's like awesome and then it kind of gets me back to like go on a hunt and see what um they have and but like let's say the 50th anniversary for example some people are going to post pictures but then after like a month or two everybody just died or you know, like, everyone just, like, died out yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's, like, because even Retaliation, as crappy as that line was, it had a lot of energy and hype yeah. for it, you know, like. Yeah, more hype but, than anything else. 
<laughs> yeah. And so I guess funny. after the movie came out, it kind of died out too because, you know, every time after the movie, we want to recreate scenes with our figures, but none of the figures look like what was we saw movie? in the movie. Exactly. <laughs> Except for like, like I said, there were like, I think, nine figures in like the five waves or four waves, five waves, nine figures throughout the whole offering of retaliation. It actually resembled, it might even have been less than nine. But, yeah. But I know two like of them. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm mean, sorry. Um, like that Jinx figure, that doesn't count as a movie figure. Sure, she had the colors of the movie, but uh -huh. the outfit that she wore looked nothing like the movie. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you had, I think you had two, uh, do I mean, two uh, ro roadblocks. You had Duke. You had Flint. You had, uh, there was someone else. <laughs> But here's the problem that we're running into already. That's four figures. And, uh, God, who else was there? Then oh, Cobra Firefly. Ninja thing, right? That That's, Cobra Trooper? There was movie? Firefly. Oh. No, they didn't. Oh, yeah, the Cobra Trooper. You're right. So, yeah, the so movie. The movie Trooper. They call it Cobra Ninja for some reason. Yeah, the Combat Ninja. Like, get the fuck yeah. out of here. Um, the Cobra, they were called Special Forces in the, in the movie. Um, so you have yeah. those six figures, and then there had to have been one other person. So there was Duke, there was Duke. We were supposed to get a movie-accurate Red Ninja, but that never it happened. It never happened, and we were supposed to get a movie-accurate Lady J. We were supposed to get a movie-accurate Storm Shadow, uh, freaking Cobra Commander. Oh, that, yeah. that, the, <laughs> the thing you showed me with the movie-accurate... Uh, the, the deluxe ultimate roadblock the that had the set. three different heads, that gift set. Yeah, I didn't know it was a set. And then I looked at some of the pictures. I was like, there was Cobra Commander. There was the ultimate roadblock who had the Rock's head, the classic head, and the Renegade's the head. Oh, yeah. my God. That would have been amazing. You know, people people would have lost their shit for that. Um, yeah, man. What about... Um, and there was someone else in there that was movie accurate, I think. Or were the others... There was, like, Slice... Um, uh, who was the other person? Oh, so it's three, three movie people. Cobra Commander, Roadblock. Anyway, I know it was four figures. It was Cobra Commander, Roadblock, Nunchuck, and Slice. So yeah, two of them were movie characters, and two were straight up comic book characters. But that would have sold like hotcakes. Yeah, and it was supposed to be an Amazon exclusive. So. Yeah. Yeah. That would have sold like hotcakes, and no one, they just somehow, I, I can't wait to find out what the excuse was. <laughs> did, did they come up with the idea after the movie bombed, or did they come up with the idea, like, before all that, you know, to, to sell of it on its own strength? Or they just want to tease us. It's just crazy, man. It's, it's so crazy how so much of the stuff, like, how could you do so well, and then, I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're falling back into the area that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> I, was, I was trying so hard to avoid, you know, talking shit about what Hasbro has been doing. Because I just, I don't get it and it doesn't make sense and it feels like they don't care. It feels like they're trying to be like Marvel without the success. Like, you know, Marvel's movies have been more successful than their comics. Or as successful as the comics, I guess I could say. Because if we didn't have the comics, they wouldn't have made movies. So, um, But at this current point, the movies are more successful than the comics. So they're putting all their eggs in the com in the movies. It feels like that's what Hasbro's trying to do, but it's like your movies aren't good. Like, And even the movie that you have that makes the most money, it's not really that good. It's just popular. So a lot of people see Transformers films... But a lot of people don't understand what they're watching. And they keep coming back. <laughs> so the movies keep making money. But when you actually sit down and watch and take in what you see. Oh my god. I mean the plot contradicts itself from one scene to the next. I mean it's just problems, issues, and volumes. And it's like it shouldn't be like that. But I just don't understand how G.I. Joe doesn't get the, the treatment that it should get. I mean fans can do better gi joe stuff than the the, the the guys with the money like that doesn't make any sense um i don't know for when i when i collect like i said i have 
teams and I have, uh, I think I do this all across the board. I have things like certain characters and certain, like when I collected Transformers, I was, I was kind of big into Transformers for a while. Growing up, I was real big into it, but I collected them strictly with the goal of having the team of characters that I always wanted to have, you know? G.I. Joe was the same yeah. way um, for both the good guys and the bad guys. I always wanted to have more Cobras than Joes, and I totally have way more Cobras than Joes. Like, I even want to... I have more Joes than Cobras. <laughs> no, because I always felt like you got to have more enemies to fight. You got your good guys need to be outnumbered to give them something to do. Otherwise, you're not really doing them justice. You know, they're not really being, yeah. you're not giving them a chance to do what they do. Um, so I, I tried my best to get a handful of Joes, and it's all the Joes that I wanted. Like, I always wanted, you know, certain figures. Like, I always wanted Gung Ho. I just never picked up one because I always missed out on the Resolute one. Well, technically it was a Rise of Cobra figure, but he was dressed like he showed up in Resolute. And um, I always missed out on that figure. He would always be like, people would be bidding on him. I never really saw him. I rarely ever saw him on a, at a buy now price that was reasonable. Um, and because the figure still is pretty much the original, the 25th figure with a, a newer vest on, you know what I mean? And a different paint scheme. So I was always like, oh, I don't know, I don't like the arms on that figure. I'm not going to pay, you know, 15 bucks for a character with shitty arms and hands that can't really hold his weapons, you know? Um, so I, I would slow, I slowed down looking for him. And then when this one came out, the 50th one, I was like, no brainer. We all were geeking out when we saw the stuff in the concept case. So let's get him. Um... But yeah, it's kind of like that. It's always, who who can I plug in here? You know, what guy fits in this situation? Like, I really want to get a Sergeant Slaughter figure. Because I've never... No, I had one when I was really little. And uh, I don't know what happened to him. Now when I go looking for him, Sergeant Slaughter is like the, the classic version. is like in the 30s or 40s. Um, and the 25th version or the San Diego Comic-Con version is like 300 bucks. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fucking damned if I pay 300 bucks for a G.I. Joe. Same thing with Zorana. She goes for ridiculous prices, too. Um, and I'm just not... I'm not willing to do that. You know, that takes the fun out of collecting for me. It's not about me saying to someone, I spent pretty much the equivalent of, like, part of a car payment or a rental payment for your, for your, ho your house or your car or whatever. I spent that on a toy that's going to sit down and look at me on a shelf. You know what I mean? Or or I'm going to take pictures of it and that's really it. Like, no, if I pay 300 bucks for a Joe, I want to watch him run around and slaughter all my Cobras. Like, I want to <laughs> see, I want to see him get up by himself and go fight, you know, whoever else is in my room. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to I don't want to buy a toy just so it can it can sit there and I'm spending way too much money. That just doesn't sound like a responsible decision. You know, and I know this is fun. But there's still a level of responsibility to it. You don't want to, you know, I can't be like, hey, son, no, uh, you know, no, no diapers for you to, uh, for, for now, <laughs> because I decided to buy a whole bunch of G.I. Joes or no new clothes for you, you know, as you grow and you need new clothes. I spent that money on G.I. Joes. Ha 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 ha. Watch me play with them. Like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. You know, like, there's just no way <laughs> that I would do that. So. I can't, I just can't do it. Um, but what I will say, though, is over the last couple, over the last couple years since I started collecting, well, not collecting, but uh, reviewing more of the figures, like I only buy figures that now I trust the brand, you know? So like I always buy figure arts and I always buy um, I'm NECA stuff. Even though I've had a couple issues with NECA, I still go back and I buy, because for the most part, I don't have issues with them. I buy old DC collectible stuff because the new DC collectible stuff is just not quality. It falls apart too easily. Um, and I buy older Joes mostly because I know what I'm getting into with them. I, I learned, though, that, especially with imports, if you're going to, if you want really quality characters, you got to spend a little bit more money. But when you do start doing it, it's more rewarding that the characters come with all this stuff, even things you never thought you wanted. 
and then you you see how good it is and how well it works. Case in point, Marauders. And I, I wanna I wanna probably start getting more stuff from them, like as far as the task force bodies go, like the Valkyries and the and the, the, the male task force figures. Because as of yeah. as, as as of right now, I only have one, but um, it's and mine was from the Kickstarter batch that they did, you know, a, a year or so ago. But uh, paying paying the eleven dollars for a body and then paying all the you know whatever the price is a dollar or so for each individual piece to build up your character, you will end up paying twenty or thirty bucks. But chances are you picked unique shit, like you know stuff that. Not everyone else is going to have exactly the build that you have. Like, if you were to make War Hero, like, take the head off of Flint, I mean, a uh, Falcon, Falcon, and then go on Marauders and look for a green task force body, then pick the body armor, pick what weapons you want them to have, or not, if you already have the weapons. Just pick the body armor, um, pick the, you know, the holsters and stuff that you want for the weapons that you already have, You'll pay, you know, 20 bucks or so, but you'll have, like, a completely quality figure that can hold every weapon. He can chamber his gun the right way. He can look down the sights of the damn gun. He can, you can put, you can holster everything, because, you know, sometimes they fall short with weapon storage, where, like, you can put the gun in the in, in the one side holster, you can put the knife in the boot or something, but then you'll have, like, two other guns and a knife that don't have a place to go, you know? No, with yeah. your... With the Marauders, you could just have all freaking holsters everywhere if that's what you want your guy to, if you want him to have all pistols. Um, if you wanted him to have all knives, you could have knife uh, sheaths all over his costume. Um, you just have so much freedom when it comes to putting together your character. And then also when you buy weapons from them, um, have you bought anything from Marauders? No, not even one gun, which I, I'm thinking of buying pistols because i'm really short on pistols for yeah. some reason in my collection so yeah do it they, they have they have packs like like you can get a pack like a team pack of you know assault rifles or pistols it's usually like five or six in a pack or something and he always they throw in one for free um so you'll always get an extra something um yeah you should do that man test them out for yourself so you can see what i'm talking about like everything they 3D printed their own shit from their own models with their own measurements. So all the weapons, even the knives, have handles that all the Joes can grip. It's none of this shit where the, the weapon is so small because it has to fit in this tiny little sheath or tiny holster that they forgot that the blade could be small and the handle could be big. It's none of that. Everything is in proportion. So, like... All the weapons I've bought from Marauders, not a single, if no Cobra, no Joe, nothing Hasbro makes that I have has problems holding that handle. It's the perfect size for everybody, for every weapon that I've ever bought from them. And uh, the, of course, their figures would hold those same weapons perfectly because they built those characters around the weapons they already made. So... It's like one of those things where I feel like since we don't get Joes, if you want to get excited for your figure again, pretty much customize the hell out of your figure um, and, and get it from them. Um, I, I, I still have a gripe with them because they sent me the wrong figure and then they tried to tell me like my, my form, my order form had the one that I asked for crossed out and then they put Night Ops on there when I wanted a Urban Ops figure. And when I called them about it, they were like, no, this is the one you picked. And I'm like, no. And I sent them a picture. I was like, this is what I ordered. And you have it crossed out here. And you gave me something else. And they were like, no, nah, actually, that was it. And they just kind of left it at that. And I'm like, you know, OK, I'll give you this. It's the first time I ordered something from them. And it wasn't what I ordered, you know, like completely. And it was a Kickstarter. So I know there was a whole lot of craziness with the Kickstarter. But besides that error i've never had issues with them i mean sometimes you have to wait a little bit for their stuff to get to you but it's always packed well they always throw in extra stuff and i mean like if you buy a pack of like five pistols and then a pack of like a bunch of assault rifles and a pack of knives or something then they'll throw in like a pack i mean a, an extra pistol or an extra assault rifle 
they'll for each of those groups they'll give you an extra thing so you'll just have a bunch of extra stuff in your bot in your bag and you only paid for a certain you know certain specific things they just give you extra shit so it, it's always fun because you're like what did i get now what extra thing did i get this time you know um the modular weapons are really cool too like the the guns that you can put the if you want you can have an under barrel grenade launcher or if you don't want that you can just take that off if you want the holographic uh sight you can use that or scope if you want a flashlight under barrel you can put that there if you want a bayonet you can put that there instead like it's crazy the amount of things that they do that hasbro still have hasn't perfected and these guys got it right the first time like i don't wow. know yeah, you should you should look into them, man. I mean, it'd be one of those things where I, I I wouldn't suggest for anybody to be like every paycheck, you know, you're putting like fifty bucks into your your figures through them because I mean it's expensive and it's it's gonna get more expensive. But I mean, like if you have like a, a character you want to upgrade, that would be a way to do it, you know, because that body that they came up with it's perfect. It's it's very it's not gonna break on you. I mean, unless you put it under extreme stress it's just not gonna break on you um it's posable it's uh it's versatile it's not made of shitty plastic um i don't know they definitely are carrying the torch as far as i'm concerned when it comes to joe's i know that was a long ass commercial for <laughs> for uh <laughs> for marauders but um it's the truth man like i think i'm gonna rebuild Fenris company with bodies from and, and gear from I mean I already have a bunch of gear from them but I might do that where I'll I'll, I'll go get green you know uh, bodies for just about everybody and redo the characters and just pop the heads on those bodies because um like I said I was blown away with how well done the figures are I mean the only downside I would say and it's not really a downside it's just something you have to be aware of is since they have peg holes all over the figure, some of the parts don't stay in without you putting, like, you, you once you decide what you want, you probably should just super glue it in there or um, yeah. gorilla glue it in there or something. And uh, because they'll pop out real easily. And some of the parts, like, there's these clips for grenades because their grenades actually have that little arm on it. And you stick the arm through the little peg holes and... Uh, if you drop, it's like a double uh, hole that pegs into wherever you want. It can peg into a belt. It can peg into, you know, shoulder, whatever. But if you drop that thing, good luck. Especially if you drop it on carpet, good luck. Oh shit! Good <laughs> luck. It took me a couple days one time to find the clip because I didn't even know I had one because it fell out when I opened the package. And uh, I'm walking around and I stepped on it. And I'm like, holy shit, what is this? And then I realized. I was like, oh crap, this was in this must have been in the bag when I bought the um you know the the figure. So uh yeah, it's definitely one of those things you might want to look into it but be aware of that. But yeah, those figures yeah. they're pretty dope. They're pretty dope. Let's see. What 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 else can I can I bring up? Who's your favorite Joe? I, I always meant to ask that. Duke? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I noticed a lot of people don't like him, but I thought he was cool. Like, yeah, he no, was always my favorite. It, like, people hate on Duke for the same reason that they hate on Cyclops, and the same reason they hate on Superman. It's just because he's the leader. Oh, come on now, guys. Come yeah, on. it's just because he's the leader, and it gets it gets really tired. Um, what? Okay, here's my list. Yay! I found it. <laughs> um, what? My favorite Joe is Beachhead. Um, he just, he's a badass. Like, the fact that he, um, in the comics especially, the fact that they made him so obsessed with being perfect. Like, because, I mean, it's the kind of job where you can't really, you can't make many mistakes because your life is hanging in the balance, you know? So you gotta be yeah. on, you gotta be on point every day. Um, so, uh, yeah, I like that. And I like the fact that he scares the shit out of the green shirts when he's training them because they all know the stories of all the crazy stuff Beachhead has done in his career. <laughs> so they're like, I hope that I don't have to train under Beachhead. And then as soon as they meet Beachhead, it's like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> it's beachhead. Um, and plus that that Pursuit of Cobra figure, it like I already liked Beachhead from the day I saw him in the movie. I was like in the in the you know the old school movie. I was like that dude's cool. Yeah. And then when I got that figure, I was like, "Yep, this guy is fucking amazing." Like this figure just it embodies how badass this guy is. He he looks like you couldn't stop him with a with like a couple rounds of fire to the chest because he's got so much gear on. He looks like he's prepared for every situation. I mean, dude's got flippers. <laughs> like what what would he like i mean i know why he has flippers in the beginning i was so like why has he got flippers but it makes sense he's an urban commando there's sewers there's waterways yeah. you know what i mean so yeah any situation yeah. he's got to be able to deal with it um i just love that figure like just looking at the figure makes me imagine scenarios to put him in and then looking at him and then looking at the uh, cobra shock troopers it just makes my mind like overload with possibilities of awesome fights that could be happening between those two um, or them and him. Um, do you have like a favorite? Uh... Actually, no, you know, we'll do. So we already did like our favorites. Well, who are your top five Joes? And then maybe. Yeah, and then maybe your top five Cobras afterwards. Top five Joe's. I'm gonna Okay, we all know number one is Jungle Duke because I love the jungle environment. Yeah, you know? it's a dope figure, and, it, and it, it's a good use of body parts too. You know, cargo pants and with the reactive impact armor underneath. Uh -huh. that, I thought that was a cool idea. Me too. Um, number two would probably be the. Joe Trooper, the Retaliation Joe Trooper. Like, yeah. come on now. Yeah. I, I could put him at number one, too, but, you know, like, <laughs> I guess Duke is my favorite character. I'm a little biased, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, the Joe Trooper was, like, amazing. And the alternate head he comes with, you know, reminds me of Robert Patrick with a mohawk. It does. <laughs> I never really <laughs> thought about it, but you're so right, man. Damn. Yeah, like, I'm like, that's the T-1000. with the <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Damn, I never thought about that, man. I'm looking at it now, and it's like, holy crap, that does look like him. Um, the third one would probably... I'm, like, looking at my collection right now. The third one would probably be low light as well because of all the gear he comes with. And yeah. you could store most of it, I believe. Yep. Yeah, and like you said, I think in your other videos, you wish his head would have like that disc hinge, you know, to look up. Yeah. And like those, yeah, because it's funny because the Marvel Universe three inch figures, like the the Iron Man figures, have it. Like he can look up, looking like he's flying and stuff. Exactly. So, so it's kind of weird that they didn't do that with the Joes. That's true. The fourth one would be Ultimate Flint. Like, we why why didn't we? Get Get that in the first wave, you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's and not a bad because, figure. It's not a bad figure. Yeah, like good use of the Joe Trooper parts, but the problem I had no beret, and I know everyone's going to be like, oh, he didn't have a beret in the movie until the ending. But when you really think about it, like in the movie, like he had a beret, but it was part of his ceremonial outfit. But let's say what happens after he goes back into the battlefield, he probably won't have his beret. So exactly. Stupid, but yeah, because the concept or the, the other Flint figure that we got was, you know, had a beret. So I'm just like, why give us a bicycle helmet with the ultimate Flint, you exactly. know? Exactly, exactly. And the fifth would probably be um, Delta Six, except to Ripcord. Yeah, somebody that likes the, the accelerator suit. Shit, man. People shit all over those things because they were kind of dumb in the movie. But it's like, Think about what you could do with that in your own... Like, if you made the movie and that was a, a weapon that they could use, think of all the situations. We play Halo, for God's sake. We played um, Vanquish. We played... Let me play so many games where the main character wears a exosuit. <laughs> How come that's so weird to people? You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I never understood why that was so weird. Like, why do people hate that those things so much? Yeah, like, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, well, I will say, if it was, like, an army of those, then I would be like, yeah, I don't think that's kind of cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it'd be cool, but it's just... But, yeah, I, I like the Delta Six Accelerator suits using for, like, you know, really important situations. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I don't know. I agree. I'm right there with you. I'm completely right yeah, there like, with you. Yeah, like, if you use that for everything, then I can see why people would be complaining. But if you're using them for, like, extreme conditions, then, yeah, like, your, your last resort, then, yeah, I can see that. Yep. Yeah, like, if it had a... If it had, I always pretended... Uh, that or imagined that it has like a limited power source so you can only use yeah. it for so long because did you ever play the Rise of Cobra video game that came out right after the movie? Nope, but I've, I've watched the gameplay though and I've heard, you know, it was like a power up that you could use for exactly. a short amount of time. Or whatever. It was the invincibility and like it was yeah. pretty awesome because it didn't last for a long time. It lasted for the first verse of the Real American Hero theme song. Because that's what plays when you power up. They yell, yo, Joe, you know, you've seen it. And then they yeah. get their armor beamed to them, and then they just go nuts. And I was like, this is awesome. This is exactly what it could have been. Go a little bit further with the tech, have it teleported to them, or have them go on a mission where they use it for the first part of the mission or the last part of the mission. However, you know, but, yeah, it has to be something temporary. It can't be the... The all and be all end all, but yeah, I agree. That's that's pretty dope. That is pretty dope. <laughs> I'm I'm glad I'm glad I asked this question because that makes me happy. I hate when like everybody uh, con conforms on the same exact things. You know, like one of the the things I hated about when I was in the Joe community was that ninety five percent of the people there conformed when it came to who their favorite character was everybody's favorite character was snake eyes snake eyes is, <laughs> he's awesome don't get me wrong but it's like aren't there like a billion other joes you mean to tell me nobody else likes another joe besides snake eyes like nobody like we all collect all these figures but you're trying to tell me that the only one you actually give a shit about is snake eyes like i just refuse, like, i refuse to believe yeah, like that. Um, I'm a DC Comics fan, but I only like Batman. Like, what the fuck? It doesn't make like, any sense. Like, yeah, especially if you've been reading comics, then you've come across other characters that are cool, too. So it's like, like them? Yeah, I get that. Everybody has their thing, but, like, didn't you see anybody else that was interesting? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on! So, yeah, like, hearing hearing you have a completely different set of... Uh, of characters that you know you would say are your top shit, even your top person. Most people hate Duke. I I have no problem with Duke. I've always thought Duke was cool. And, I just don't like the Channing Tatum as Duke. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I remember we were in the Pursuit of Cobra line. We were supposed to get characters with their movie likeness, but uh -huh. I guess they changed the last minute. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So let's see. You said so. Duke is number one. Um, the Cobra Trooper was number two. Yeah, the Joe Trooper was number two. Um, you said uh, Low Light was your number three. Um, Four was Ultimate Flint. Yep, and then your Accelerator yeah. Suit was number five. Yeah. Cool, cool. Mine are weird because most of my favorite figures, if we're talking figures, it would be different from Joe's as characters. If we're talking about characters... Still, my number one favorite character is uh, Beachhead. Then it's Flint and Lady J. That would be number one, you know, two and three. I love the two of them yeah. as, a, as a team because, like, even before they were married in the comics, they always acted like husband and wife. So, like, when I was a yeah. kid, I always imagined, like, they were married. Like, it felt like it was an unwritten thing, except now when I go back and I watch some of those older episodes, Flint's kind of stuttering over his words when lady J is kind of flirting with him so then you realize oh wait this is kind of new this isn't like you know they haven't been doing this for a very long time uh but i like the way they play off of each other it's not your typical 100 percent typical guy girl relationship because even though dude digs her like crazy he still sees her as an equal and same with her you know what i mean 
That it's not like yeah. the guy is always saving the girl and the girl is incapable and blah blah blah. She was actually always capable. And they uh a lot of times in the cartoon they use her without Flint and vice versa. They use Flint without Lady J, which was pretty cool too. So you get to see them shine by themselves. Um so I dig that. Um so one is Beachhead and they're two and three. Um I like Airtight a lot. I, I don't know if it's because of the figure that made me go back and then pay more attention because I think Airtight was only in a handful of episodes of the cartoon. Um, yeah. But I just like the fact that he's the he's really the nerd, but then he's also capable. It shows you that like all the Joes are kind of they're trained similarly, despite whatever their their uh, specialty is. They're still you know they're all capable to a certain level of doing these amazing things. And then they are amazing at their specialty, you know? And I, I dug that. Like the episode, I think it was called The Germ. That was pretty cool. The one where there was like, Cobra came up with this big, like, it was the blob, essentially. And it was like eating everything. And then they shot airtight into the blob with this rocket. He was like in a giant rocket. Well, it wasn't giant, but it was like a big rocket. They shot him into it. And then he was wearing his containment suit. So once he got in, he could swim around and see what was inside and figure out a way to stop it from eating everything. It was pretty cool. Um, but, and his figure is fucking dope. Like, his figure is one of the best figures in the line. Just the fact that he obviously fights zombies. Like, clearly he fights Chemical Z stuff. <laughs> because that's the way he was set up, you know? That, that's pretty awesome. Um, oh, man. Uh, character. Stalker would be number five. The first Joe. It's one of those things that they don't really even talk about that often unless you read the comics. Stalk yeah. Stalker's like the shit. Like he's been around since the very beginning. He's just as good as Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. He's right number one guy to Hawk. Like he could he could be the next leader of G.I. Joe if they if they felt like writing it that way. You know what I mean? Like he just yeah, he should be, man. He should be. <laughs> yeah, he's been around long enough. You know, he's he's paid his dues. Um I just like the fact that he's, you know, uh, uh, a character of color that they didn't make 100% generic, even though in the beginning of his story, he was like running gangs and shit. Um, the fact that they made him the positive example where he took, he kind of took his screwed up situation, turned it around and just became a badass soldier, you know, like that's pretty cool. And, and his designs over the years have been some of the more consistent, good designs in the Joe, like, in Joe characters. His figures, that 30th anniversary figure is amazing. It just, the only thing that bothers me about the figure is that it's the same exact body as, like, name, you know, a bunch of figures in the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, Snake Eyes had that body. Uh, there's a version of the Steel Brigade that is exactly that body. Um, Retaliation Beachhead. Oh, yeah, yeah, Retaliation Beachhead from the three-pack. He was like that. Um, yeah, they, they just, they kind of overdid usage of it, but it worked the way that he was painted up and sculpted up in this, in that line. If we're talking purely figures though, my favorite figures, the ones I played with the most are the five main characters from Rise of Cobra. It was Duke, uh, uh, Ripcord, uh, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, and Heavy Duty. Like, I played with them so damn much. And I love the fact that only two of those characters have the same body type. And the rest were all individual different sculpts. They didn't reuse anything. Especially Heavy Duty. Like, having the same armor that the two smaller guys had. But then he's, like, twice the size of those guys. Like, that's awesome. Uh, I had too much fun with them. Way too much fun with them. What about Cobra? Who are your, who are your top five Cobras? For figures or characters? Because the, I thought we were talking about figures. That's why I named them all. Uh huh. Yeah, we could do it like yeah. that. We could do it with figures, by figures. Who are your top five Cobra figures? Okay. Number one, Pursuit of Cobra um, Firefly. That should be the only Firefly we should yeah, have gotten. I Fuck agree. Everything else. I Fuck agree. everything else. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. That's the best design, in my opinion, for Firefly. Unless you're sticking with the classic design, that's the best one. 
Yeah, everyone says he looks like a predator or green goblin from the first Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Man, he looks like but someone that would be scary. I like his head. Yeah, it's awesome. I have a lot of Firefly figures for some reason, and he's a character who was never, ever on my radar when I was a kid. I didn't even know he existed when I was a kid, because I think he's in, like, one episode, and he, he, he speaks in one episode, and he's in the background of a lot of episodes. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, Firefly, who else? Number two, Paris Pursuit Baroness. Yeah, that's, like, a, that's a nice figure. Because I, I know we got the Resolute Baroness, but I, I, I don't have that figure, so I don't know how good that figure is. But, uh -huh. um, what's it called? The 50th Baroness was, like, a complete joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ended up fixing her. I, 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 uh, stripped, some, I stripped down some of the paint. And I repainted her lips, and she actually looks yeah. like like the Baroness. Yeah, I, I bought three sets of that. <laughs> what? Wow! Because and they're, they're all like that. Because I I love the Lady J body, so I was like, I'm gonna use her like uh, her body as part of my Joe verse, you know. Yeah. And then the Baroness figure, I hated the head, and I just ended up using it as like a Cobra, like emo Cobra officer or something. That's cool. That works. Yeah, but yeah, Paris Pursuit Baroness. Um, number three, I did like the Rise of Cobra Destro, even though he didn't wear that gray outfit that he did in the movie. But yeah, I, I thought it was a cool looking Destro. Yeah, that's my that's been my default Destro for a long time. Um, yeah, the only gripe I have with that figure is that his head is not chromey enough. Like it's it's so yeah. it's like kind of a, a dull gray or dull silver. Yeah. But yeah, that's a, um, that's a good one. I took the head from the 50th Destro and put it on the Rise of Cobra body. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because he had like this big head, and, and the one that we got for Rise of Cobra was like super small. Yeah. Which is weird. I agree. Number four is the um, Shock Trooper, man. Like... Is number four is the Cobra Shock Trooper, just because, um, come on, like, if you watch those guys in the film, those guys would be, like, menacing and scary as fuck, you exactly, know? Exactly, it's like the SWAT team on steroids. Yeah, kicking down your doors, you know, like, terrorizing, you know? My yep. God. Like, yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, because when you watch your retaliation, those Cobra Special Forces, those guys are super weak, man. <laughs> super. I, I understand they're just there to get killed off, but, like, because compared to the Neo Vipers, those guys put in effort. At least they killed some Joe Troopers, but Special Forces, they look like they're just, they're just standing there just to get shot. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, they were regular soldiers. Oh. They were pretty much U.S. soldiers that worked... How do I put this? Because they were Cobras, they were Cobra soldiers as well, but they turned the U.S. Special Forces into the Cobra Special Forces, which is kind of oh, okay. which is kind of weird, you know, when you think about it. It's like, uh, damn, that wouldn't. No government would allow the president to do such things. So I don't know where they got that yeah. from, but whatever. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I love the shock troopers. And number five would. Probably be a tie between three figures. Uh oh. Um, the Pursuit of Cobra Zartan. Yeah. Like, like, I, like, I saw your video. You said he looked like savage, and I thought Zartan would like that way for uh -huh. a mercenary. Yeah. I thought he would be a savage. Um, the Renegades Cobra Trooper, because I have six of those guys. <laughs> so, um, and I would probably say. The Pursuit of Cobra, Cobra Commander. The one that looked, uh, the repaint of the movie. Because I felt like he, the Rise of Cobra Commander should have looked like that. Yeah, you know, I agree. He should, yeah, he should have looked like that. With the, even though it's a weird looking mask, but it was all chromed. I would have preferred that over the clear face or whatever. Yeah, I actually took the head off of the Cobra Commander that came with the, uh, with the Retaliation Hiss. I took that head yeah. off and put it on the Pursuit of Cobra uh, Snake. I, I mean, uh, Cobra Commander body. The 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 second one, not the first one. Yeah. The one that I'm mixing it up. The Rise of Cobra version 
I took the head off of that and I took the retaliation head from the hiss and put it on that body. So he's got he looks kind of like a cross between the uh, renegades with the you know the suit bottom half with the with the vest and stuff. Actually, it's not even renegades; it's more the comics. Because you remember in the comics he had the dome with the fangs that go upward on his chin. Oh yeah. So he kind of he kind of looks like that because the helmet that that figure has is the closest to the one that he actually wears in retaliation. Yeah, I know. But when I saw that, I'm like, you guys are getting closer, but that's not 100%. You know? <laughs> exactly. I, I'm still so mad. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't And I know that. we're trying to stay away from the negative stuff, but it's just I can't help. Because I thought because for the longest time, because it's been like, what, three years since retaliation? Yeah. I thought... I guess Hasbro's plans was to never make a movie Cobra Commander until I saw that gift set. I'm like, you guys got to be kidding me. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, so we were supposed to get the whole time because I thought we were going to get none. So that's why I wasn't really that mad. Well, I'm mad, but it's just like, okay, I guess we're not meant to get one after all. Yeah. But after seeing that shit, I'm like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. That's how I feel too, man. It it just uh, it doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah, it's it's cool if you go in the direction of the negative stuff. I'm not I'm not saying like let's never ever say you know what we feel when it comes to the negative stuff. It just I was trying to like like the goal is to is to that's the topic. But if you feel a certain way about something, just say it. That's the whole point of this. Like so, you know. Yeah. Because we, it's not like there. Someone's telling us we can't say anything about it. You know what I mean? Like the the whole point is that we're fans and and we're we're regular folks. We don't. There's no other extra piece to this. It's just we like GI Joe. We've been collecting GI Joe for a long time, and we feel like there's a lot of things they could have done better, that they just didn't do. And and when we look back on how they used to do stuff we see that they're capable of doing the things that we're asking for because they did it in the past. Um, the fact that they're now acting like they're, it's impossible for them to do these things is just kind of frustrating, you know? And then they ask for more money for the figures. Like, the figures have gone up in price, but the quality of the figures have gone down the shitter. I mean, wave one retaliation to, like, whatever, 3.3 or 3.4, whatever the last wave was, the quality went down a sizable amount it was really bad like freaking <laughs> colton and his cross eyes and his <laughs> his mushy arms yeah. and stuff it was like what what is this like what the fuck or like the uh uh storm shadows that the all white storm shadows if you bought them when they first came out they were kind of softer plastic but if you bought them after that like during the when the third waves came out they were even softer plastic to the point where they didn't grip the swords at all. To the point, I hated that. It was man. Just, it, I really hated that. It was terrible, man. It was super terrible. Um, the the freaking uh, what are they called? The uh, night vipers. They were even worse. <laughs> they were even worse. And I've seen people uh, army build them like a motherfucker, and I'm like, why would you army build such a bad figure? And I'm seeing them have like droves and droves and droves, and they're balancing the gun in the guy's hands. I mean, maybe they have enough hands that they were able to, like, replace all the hands, but I don't know. I don't know how they, how people did it. I don't know why they do it. It's, it should, even worse than that is the Night Viper in the 50th, because he's all, oh, yeah. he's all gummy, <laughs> all gummy. I, I don't even, I don't even know what I did with mine. I think I put him in a box and just left him there, because he's just not worthy. Um, okay, so my, I'll get my top five cobras and i might have a lot of ties because there's a lot i like a lot of the cobra figures from rise of cobra on uh let's see number five will be the uh the cobra the rise of cobra eel you know i'm talking about the 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 divers i really love those guys their their masks are just badass looking and their uh, their gear, like the fact that you could take off once you take off the flippers, they still look menacing and tough, and they don't look like they're stuck underwater, and that's it. I oh yeah, that. and that's sorry to cut you out for a minute, but you're good. 
Um, that's why I wish I would have done it as a kid. I wish, like, one of my friends or myself would have had, a, you know, a house with a pole in the back and anything that has to do with water. That would have been fun, you know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. I guess that's one of those things that I don't have just because, you know, it's out of my control because I don't have a pool yeah. or anything. But let's just say if I did, that would have been the best thing ever, you know? <laughs> Yeah, those things are awesome. And I was like, when I did the review of the, the sub from uh, True Heroes, that's who yeah. goes in it. That's exactly who you need to put in there, you know? Um, so those would be number five. Maybe it'd be a tie between them and the elites, the, the Rise of Cobra um, elite troopers. Um, they look awesome. I have, mine are weird because one of them has a, a Cobra emblem on his chest and then the other one doesn't. I don't, I don't even know how and why that is, but they still look like badasses. I mean, they kind of look similar to the eels, but they just look like they do damage. They don't look like your standard Cobra Troopers. They don't look like the standard Neo Vipers. They just look like something else entirely. And that's one thing I have to give uh, Rise of Cobra. All the other types of Vipers that weren't repaints of the Neo Viper, they all look pretty damn menacing. And depending on like what their role was... They look more menacing than the last one, like the uh, commander or commando, the Viper commando. He's bigger than the Neos. He had that grappling hook backpack, and uh, he's kind of like a like a bluish purplish kind of tint to his armor. Uh, yeah, he's a bad. And he comes with that big ass gun. I think it's the same gun that uh, Destro came with. The Rise of Cobra Destro came with that can split in half. Except his gun yeah. was molded as one piece. Um, he's a badass figure. Badass figure. He doesn't look like anything that we saw in the movie. He looks along the lines of that stuff. But it, it just makes you wonder, like... What I thought he was in the movie. I thought he was, like, in the beginning where Duke and Ripcord got ambushed. But, oh, maybe. Um, maybe. You might be right. You might be right. Yeah. You might be right. He he, he looks slightly different from the others. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out because I totally missed that. Um, yeah, because they were like um, – they showed like three of them side by side and I'm like, oh, I, I still haven't got those figures. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, crap. They're in the movie? I'm like, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out because, yeah, I just – the other day, um, my younger son, he wanted to see the movie. We were at – walmart and he saw it and he was like it says gi joe on there and i'm like yeah that is gi joe i'm like you can't read and he's like but it says gi joe because he recognizes fonts and logo types and such so he figured it out and i was like okay i'll get it it was like a dollar so <laughs> i picked it up um and i watched it briefly um i wasn't paying as much attention as i probably should have because i totally missed that but uh yeah i dig that design so I don't know, but the Elites and the Eels are definitely my number five. Uh, my number four would be the uh, Iron Grenadiers. I love the, the P Pursuit of Cobra Iron Grenadiers. I love those figures. They're just like... I, I, yeah, I, I still haven't gotten them just because if I don't have money bags, Destro, what's the point of me having getting an Iron Grenadier? Well, know? I mean, they're still his personal guard, so you know you can still have him surrounded by a bunch of those guys you know like those are yeah. his, his little entourage um yeah i got you and and now you could probably get i think the the two packs are 10 bucks each and that's one of the ones you can get a bunch of steel brigade and a bunch of them because they're they're 9.98 at uh, toys r us now that's good that's like paint five bucks each for yeah, a joe pretty much that's the only way it makes a lot of these sets worth it um, the three packs, I never see the three packs. I think I saw them when they initially came out, and since then, nothing. Um, yeah, I, I, I keep seeing the three packs. I'm like, yeah, a blue Dusty and a blue Bazooka, yeah. you can kiss my ass. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love the Iron Grenadiers. And uh, I'm trying to think, is there another fi another Cobra Trooper that I, I hold in that same regard? Uh, maybe the shock troopers yeah maybe the either the shock troopers or the uh crimson guards from retaliation i love those guys the cgs i think they're pretty cool looking um i, I just can't find i have three in total i have the shadow guard and then i have the two crimson guards um 
I just want to find more of them. And I, I hate seeing them online for like 27 bucks. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Plus shipping. I'm like, get out of here, guys. Get out of here. <laughs> they're cool, but they're not that cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just say the the um, number four will be the uh, Iron Grenadiers from Pursuit of Cobra. I think those guys are amazing. And I have like one with Brock Lesnar's head. <laughs> I put a Brock Lesnar head head on uh, one of the uh you know the the iron grenadiers the leader of the iron grenadiers so he just looks like a monster um let me see number three would be uh zartan also i love that zartan i was looking at a review for the uh, 50th zartan and i was like his face changing gimmick is so stupid in that one because he's still wearing like 95 he's wearing the whole costume and he just has a different face i'm like that's pretty stupid <laughs> yeah whereas like this one you could change pretty much the costume and you could change yeah. the head that was awesome it makes the most sense it's like give him you know and if they were smart they should have made like a couple more sets just for that you know or package them with other characters or something but uh yeah that was awesome man that he could be a whole different joe and uh or a different yeah. character for and, and then in the Cobra Zartan was basically just a pit trooper. So. Yeah, with with like paint on his eyes, which was kind of lame. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I really dig all of his whole everything. I like the 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 guns he came with. I like the knives. I like the weird like Mad Max esque design. I like the fact that he has that bird that sits up on the uh, staff, and everything was well yeah. done. Have you ever noticed, too, if you look closely at his chest, he's got these, like, three, like, chopper points tattooed on his chest? Yeah. I'm like, and it's, like, almost not there. Like, you could miss it. But if you turn it, if you tilt him just to the right angle and the light hits him the right way, you can see those tattoos. And it's like, this is what I'm talking about. It's They're capable of doing better. They're so capable of doing this level all the time. Um, so that's that's number three. Uh, number two would be uh, Shadow Tracker. I think he's the most unique of the Mercs that you know we've had for Cobra. Um, I almost wish that they, he was a one-off sculpt that no one ever, they never used that again because it feels yeah. like uh, you know the mask they've used that helmet for some of the other troopers. There's like a a Cobra trooper of some sort from or a Neo Viper or some shit like that. One of the Vipers has a similar helmet to that and then uh you know his body was reused for uh spirit pursuit of cobra spirit but uh in my collection he's one off i don't have anybody else with his parts and i dig that i dig that figure a lot and then number one is uh ultimate storm shadow because that's like one of my favorite figures of all time easily he just is awesome and if you have the uh, Rise of Cobra, Storm Shadow, you could just switch his head so he's not wearing the mask. It's just, uh, I mean, a white ninja. It's just, it's fucking amazing. And the backpack where you can open it up and he's got all those little, like, judges' pens and dirks and shuriken and it's ridiculous. The size and, you know, climbing claws and a dart gun. It's just like, this guy is prepared. <laughs> he's so prepared. <laughs> and I, I love it, man. I mean, it made me sit there. I mean, when I first got him, I remember just constantly, I'd come home from work, and I'd be ready to do a review or work on some freelance, and I'd end up playing with him for a couple hours. I'm like, shit, I need to stop and work on my, you know, my grown-up responsibilities. But um, <laughs> but <laughs> the figure just made me feel like a little kid because it had all those things that, like, if you were growing up in the 80s, ninjas were big. So, like... You know, having a little ninja that actually looks the part. I mean, everything from head to toe is pure ninja. They didn't they didn't modernize anything. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then once I fixed his hands, too, I switched his hands because he has those weird gripping, like, like the fingers are really separated, so they're really soft. So he doesn't hold. He, yeah. he doesn't hold his weapon. Like, supposed to hold his like kunai or shurikens, right? Yeah, in between his fingers and stuff. Yep. And uh, yeah. so I switched them with the ones from the uh, Rise of Cobra, um, one of the Rise of Cobra, you know, uh, uh, Storm Shadows. So now he can hold his weapons perfectly. 
The only weapon he can't hold, like, fancy is he can't, you can't put shurikens between his fingers. But if I needed that shot, I could always switch his hands back. But, yeah, yeah. I, I love that figure. I love that figure. It reminds me of one of my favorite games of all time was Shinobi 3. And uh, when I was a kid, that was on the Genesis. And when I was a kid, my, I had the 12-inch Storm Shadow back when he was on the Ninja Force. And uh, I used to pretend he was pretty much the same character. I mean, he was still Storm Shadow. I just made him do all the stuff that Joe Musashi <laughs> did. Because I, I was like, that was the only ninja thing I had besides the Ninja Turtles. Um, for whatever reason, nobody capitalized on making quality figures of ninjas back in that day. But uh, I would use that 12-inch figure, make him fight aliens, make him fight, you know, uh, drug dealers, make him fight Cobra, make him fight demons, you know, like whatever I could come up with, I would put this ninja in the middle of it. And seeing that toy made me think right back to all that and sit there and come up with scenarios. I had him fighting spawn figures and just all kinds of stuff. And it was awesome. But yeah, that's, that's my top five figures. Um, character wise, it's sim it's pretty much the same with the exception of Destro is one of my favorite characters. So he'd be number two. Number three would be uh, resolute Cobra commander. I love that character. He's so hardcore. It was ridiculous. Um, and, uh, four would be Zartan. Uh, I just like that he's unapologetically crazy and is like, I like killing people and that's why I do this job. <laughs> so, you know, that's why you need to fear him. Um, and then, uh, number five would be, uh, I don't know, maybe still, I don't even know what Shadow Tracker is like in the comics. Have, have you ever read any comics with him in it? Nope. I've never, I've never seen him in anything, so I don't know. Number five would probably be the Baroness. She's just, she's pretty badass too, character-wise, and they've done a lot with her character over the years. So, yeah, but yeah, man, those are, those are the choices. What figure is there? Any figure that you like that you have a version of that did not receive an update that you think needs one? Like, when you like, like for instance, like, uh, I just got Buzzer, the 25th anniversary Buzzer, but there's there hasn't been an updated Buzzer since the 25th anniversary version. It's like every version of that figure has been the 25th anniversary version repainted or repackaged or something. I feel like he would be a character that needs a modern update. Is there any character that exists that you have a figure of? that you think needs an update that never got the update? Not really. I have all the figures that, or the characters that I wanted that has an update, you know. Oh, okay. I, I can't really find anyone. Yeah. I think another person who would is Joe Colton. And I know they did, no, the, coll the Collector Club did one, but I hate the Collector Club. I, I'm not, or subscription, whatever, collectors, whatever. I don't like those, that, that whole si situation. Usually the figures look yeah. like, they look like the 90s figures that made most of us stop collecting G.I. Joe. So I don't understand what the draw is for those figures and why people are willing to pay, you know, 400 bucks for 12 figures that look like that kind of shit. Um, but they did do a Joe Colton. I don't know if he was a convention exclusive or whatever, but he was a guy in a suit with the, the funny beard, like the classic, you know, Kung Fu grip GI Joes. And that was pretty, yeah. cool. that was pretty cool. But I want like a modern reimagining of Joe Colton. That's not Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I would love to see a new Bomb Strike figure, but the collector's club, I didn't like the way she looked. Who? Bomb Strike? <laughs> Bomb strike. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some customs yeah. that were amazing. Yeah, because the collectors club, they're still using the um, Scar uh, renegade scarlet torso, which is like, why are we using that for every female character now? Yeah, because it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> because it's cheap. That's how they do just like, stuff. Just like giving every big guy um, a minigun. What next? They're going to make another big boa yeah, with a minigun? Exactly. Yeah, it's annoying. It's cheap. They're just like, hey, let's do it. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the Collector's Club at all. I think all those figures are me mediocre. The best set to me was their Iron Grenadiers set because they reused those parts perfectly. 
making all those different characters that fit, you know, Destro's little crew. But uh, I never was a fan of the Collector's Club. I think they're overpriced for what it is that you're actually getting. I mean, figures that have like one paint app or two paint apps, but the rest of the figure is just cast in, you know, different weird colors and stuff. Like, yeah, no, I'm not paying like 50 bucks per figure for that shit. You know what I mean? Or, or 30 bucks per figure for that just because it's exclusive. Like, it's exclusively garbage. Like, come on. Um, but, you know, to each their own in the end. You get what works for you. But for me, that doesn't work. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, that's that's probably it for me as far as the ones that I think that could use a, a redo. No, you know what? Actually, if I'm being really fair, the whole Resolute line needs... The attention they need they need to be done on Rise of, or Pursuit of Cobra bodies, so they have the right hands, um, the weapons and stuff have more detail. The, the the you know gear has more detail because I think Resolute looked really good, but like Duke is not accurate to the show. Um, yeah, and uh, there's someone else too that's not very accurate to the show. I think it was uh, Roadblock is not accurate to the show either. He's close, though. Um, they needed to redo some of that stuff and do a better version of, like, a lot of the Cobra characters. Like, uh, that Storm Shadow is terrible. It's fucking <laughs> terrible. Like, I remember watching reviews, and I think one of my homeboys had the figure. Who is it that had that figure? Because I know I played with it, and I was just like, why did they do this? Why is Why are his swords sticking out on a weird angle? Why is his, you know, his hood so big? Why is... I just kept asking questions and he was like, dude, yeah, the figure sucks. I know. Um, they need to redo a lot of that shit, man. I, I, I'm, I kind of regret not getting some of those guys. Cause I really dug, uh, Destro and, uh, I really dug, uh, the Baroness actually looked pretty cool in, in resolute too. Um, but, uh, yeah, for some reason I always pass on that. Every time I've had an opportunity to get it, I just pass on it. But yeah, same here because, when I saw the both Resolute packs, I'm like, you know what? I'll buy it later. You know, that that stupid stunt <laughs> that everyone pulled, you know, I'll buy it later. Yep. And then three years later, it's like, you, know, you regret it. Like, whoops. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> I, I, I wish that I had picked it up, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Someday I'll pick it up and we'll I'll review it and see what's going on with it. I plan on jumping back in and doing some more Joe reviews, though, because... I realized that I haven't even reviewed half of the Joes that I have. And I did a lot of Joe reviews, especially in the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go back and review a lot of them. Like, I, I want to review the uh, Cobra Troopers from Retaliation. Because after, between my son and I, we have eight, I think. I think he has four and I have four. I got them for really cheap, too. I got them on, on, uh, on uh, eBay for really cheap a couple years back. But um, I have a newfound respect for them because I realized what they were going for when they took away certain things. Like I was talking about earlier with the Joe versions of them. You know what I mean? The yeah. Wave 1 version. But yeah, I want to review those guys. Um, I want to redo some of the reviews I did before because my camera and my lighting was so bad. And some of those, like I couldn't get a clear, like a really crisp shot. So some of the pictures just weren't that great. But, uh, and I want to go back and review some of the guys that I only, uh, I did in like a, a, a mass review. I want to review some of them individually so people can see what those figures look like. But, um, yeah, man, I hope, uh, we can do, we do this, uh, at least, you know, every couple weeks. Yeah. Um, it'd be dope to, you know, just jump in and, and geek out about whatever we find and whatever random topics come to mind. Uh, I, uh, cause this is something, like I said, when we were talking about doing this, it's one of those things yeah. that like, I rarely get to talk about Joe's with my, the ninjas that are close to me. Like even ODC and, uh, Agent O, um, Agent O collected them cause he wanted to make like an Expendables team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he's not like a big Joe collector like, like I am and like you are. Um, same thing with, uh, ODC, he collects Joe's here and there but that's not his main thing and uh you know it's nice to to have these conversations with 
other collectors that are like into this thing you know what i'm saying like full on this is this is one of your main things um because then you know it's not like i'm going to throw out information or bring up characters that you have no idea who they are you know yeah <laughs> um, but uh yeah man if there's uh if you come up with anything else that you want to um you know use as a topic let me know man just it's not going to be limited to what i think of you know if you come up yeah, with some stuff um, just i still haven't addressed my jovers or the movies or anything like that yet. Well, uh, yeah maybe we can do that we can talk about the movies next time in uh in detail yeah. you know because like yeah a lot of i know for me a lot of things that happen in the movie make sense to me it's just how they happen don't <laughs> yeah and and so so like if i was to make and you'll see it in the short um like the short my short picks up where retail like right between where re retali um re the first gi joe ends and where retaliation should have started so uh the part that i skip is i don't show you how cobra commander escaped the um coffin or whatever but he es yeah. he escaped he's already escaped and uh, this is what sets off the pursuit of Cobra. Because I always thought that was a cool idea to start your series from where that piece ends. And I had said, even when we were on the Joe community, I wanted my shorts to kind of give you an idea of how I feel the Joes and the Cobras, how the world should be, as opposed to what we've been seeing. And we see a lot of people piggyback off of what's actually in the movies and I don't want to do that. I only want to piggyback off of certain events and then uh, come up with my own way of how everything works. But, um, yeah, man, like I said, keep a, keep track. Write down whatever ideas you have. Um, let, you know, we will anything, anything goes. Because for me, I can't find enough uh, podcasts about G.I. Joe that are actually about G.I. Joe and not about, you know, you just picking up obscure shit just because, or you buying up everything with the G.I. Joe name on it. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's not what I'm interested in, so. Yeah, and pretty much, yeah, and <laughs> we're not hating. If we said some negative stuff, we're not hating because we're hating, you know? A lot of people mistake that yeah. for some reason. It's true. It's like, we want Hasbro to be better. It's like a parent punishing a kid. I mean, there's some parents out there who are just like toxic people and stuff, but yeah, yeah. for the most part, for the most part, yeah, it's not because they want to punish their kids because just because they want to. It's they want them to be better, the best exactly. they can be. Same thing with Hasbro. We just want them to be better. You know, they're capable of that stuff, but they refuse to do it. You know, and they've shown us that they can do it. So you yeah, know what I mean, like the, we're not coming. We're not making this shit up. Like, you know, on the fly, we're, we're basing this off of what they used to do. So, you know, because, like, people forget that, that Hasbro owns their factories. So when they talk about prices of plastic and manufacturing and blah, 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 it doesn't matter because Hasbro owns the factory. So, like, that's yeah. not, that's not a, an argument. That's not a valid argument. Um, but, uh, you know, it's all these little pieces of, of information that, you know, we just want to go over because... We love we love GI Joe, and it will suck when it goes away completely. Because I know it, it, it seems like it's on that path. So, um, and in the comments too, if you guys have ideas for stuff you want us to talk about, put them in there. I mean, we may not use everything, but like something is sure to spark some kind of idea that will, uh, you know, be a catalyst for us to talk about something in this and. Uh, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for more people to get in on the conversation, so this could be a fairly big back and forth, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't want to have, like, yeah. ten people, but, you know, five people would be awesome. And, five. Uh, that'd be dope, because then we can all, you know, and it doesn't matter if you collect classic stuff or, you know, if you collect uh, the new school stuff or whatever, just have an opinion that makes sense and be able to articulate that opinion. <laughs> that's, all <we're, laughs> that's all we're looking for. You know, if if... if if the only thing you think of is everything you saw in the movie and everything you saw in the, in the cartoon and that's it, that's all there is to it, and you don't want to deviate at all, then we're probably not going to really have that much to talk about because we're using our imagination and, and, and we're thinking past what we were given. Because that's the thing that's missing from this. You know, the whole beauty of G.I. Joe is that for each person, you could have a completely different Joe-verse. 
because you know yeah your everybody's wallets are you know different depth um everybody's imagination's a little different everybody's uh, uh likes and dislikes are different the 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 main thing that has to exist though is you have to have the imagination to you know push your joe verse and do something with it if you don't have the imagination to do that then i mean there's not much to talk about so <laughs> you know and it's not me trying to diss people it's just you know i'm, I'm encouraging folks to use your imagination because that's what this is all about we're big kids you know and this is what we used to do when we were kids there's no reason why now, as a big kid, you can't do the same thing. Use your imagination. It's like they feel all their imagination is stripped away when they grow older. And now everything's like active Baylor, yeah. Black Hawk Down, Saving Private Ryan. Like, yeah. come on, guys. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, like, but let's say if you do have your Joe verse like that, then I'm sorry. Then no. I can't say we're going to have a crossover soon or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but let's say if we do have a crossover sometime, I'm going to kill your Joes off. Because <laughs> you, you, guys are like, you guys want to be super realistic with your shit. In my Joe verse, anything goes, man. We fight demons, aliens, you know. <laughs> we go to different dimensions, multiverse, time yeah. travel, all that stuff. Yeah, same here. Same here. Like I said, my, my, my Joe verse is based off Contra. So if you have problems fighting giant robots and aliens piloting giant robots or something like that, then I don't know what to tell you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Because I feel that's why I made my own team that's within the Joe, Fer Joe verse, but it operates a little bit outside of the Joe verse. So that way I can do stuff that it works for me and it doesn't necessarily have to poop all over, you know, whatever it is that, you know, you people might think the Joe verse is supposed to be. Um, and even yeah. my Joe verse, it's more akin to Metal Gear than it is to like pure, you know, standard GI Joe. I mean, there's still Cobra Law and all that craziness, but it, the modern Joe verse should, to me, should feel a lot like Metal Gear, with just a lot more solid snakes as opposed to just one guy. You know what I mean? Like you got yeah. teams and teams and teams of very special soldiers. So I don't know, but yeah, that'll be a good topic. Maybe the next one we'll just talk about Joe verses and like. You know, things that we feel the modern G.I. Joe could be like. Because I mentioned a lot of these things in my video when I was talking about if I ran Hasbro, the things they should do, like a near future version of G.I. Joe. Because they always said that that's like the time period. It was always near future tech for G.I. Joe, at least in the toys, whenever they would modernize them. Uh, it would always be near future, especially Pursuit of Cobra was like that. It was like near future. Um, same thing with yeah. Rise of Cobra was as well. So um, it would be yeah. Dope. So movies and Joe verses, right? Yeah. <laughs> Next yeah. time. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Yeah. So cool. Well, um, this has been fun, man. <laughs> it's been real fun. Yeah, me too. Even though I haven't talked much, and this is my very first podcast, but more, I'll be more engaging. Ever? This more. is your first yeah. podcast ever. This is my first podcast ever. I mean, I've joined like Hang Google Hangouts and stuff, but it's just a talk. It's not being recorded or anything. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But this is my first podcast. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. At least it's talking about GI Joe, though. I mean, you did you did fine. It's not like you didn't talk at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> just it's like I said. I don't. I'm not w with with the. I mean, you've listened to off our brains. We just we get on a topic and then just ramble. So whatever happens, yeah. that's why we called it off our brains, because whatever falls off our brain, that's what comes out of our mouths. And it's just, you know, <laughs> you just talk for the sake of talking, but you have a point. You know, there's a point we're trying to get to. So, uh, yeah, same goes for this, except we just want to talk about things with G.I. Joe that we haven't really been able to talk about for a long time or that when we start the conversation... Somebody brings up snake eyes and it runs away with snake eyes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I want to talk about the stuff we actually are interested in that actually drives us to be, you know, Joe collectors. So, yeah, I, I, lo I love yeah. this and hopefully we'll keep it up, man. And hopefully Hasbro watches us because consider us like the hope and light of G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. That would be nice because I would love to yeah. be working on, on G.I. Joe stuff. That'd be awesome. Well, I guess that's it for us, though. You guys have been great, and uh, we will see you on the next episode. See ya. Peace, guys.